What is up, Domin Nerds? We are back again, 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 with another episode, a very special episode. I'm very excited for this one. I'm here for episode 5454, getting those numbers up there. I am uh, sitting here watching the sunrise in that uh, beautiful Amersfoort in the Netherlands. Um, joined, as usual, by my beautiful co-host over here, MJ, the man with the mustache. For luscious locks, MJ. The I don't know if I can coin my own nickname or <laughs> moniker, but yeah, hells yeah. Here we are, the other like nerd it. in this one. Dude, super excited. It's, it's Tuesday over here, July 5th. Uh, oh, yeah. And super excited because Rod, you know, you're over in Europe. You're you're I am in Europe. you're yucking it up with your homies, <laughs> and I'm so happy. I'm so jealous. This is the biggest thing. I'm jealous as well as all the other nerds. Probably so jealous mm-hmm. of all the shits that happened. But let's just open up the floodgates and introduce yeah. our guest. Yes. Well, as if you're watching the video, I think it's pretty obvious, but. I'm here with the one and only Alex Rausch, the legend Alex, himself, the super nog, the super nog. Oh, oh my yes. gosh, legends of legends! This is really, really a treat. Thank you so much, Alex, for joining us on this one. The, the schedule has just worked out beautifully, and of course, you're such a, a nice dude. Letting Rod say your place, hang out for a bit, and just. Again, so excited because you have seen Kendama from a long distant past, possibly in many people's eyes, the only Westerner that has like seen Kendama and continue to love it as it has been progressing into what it is now. So we got a lot to go into a lot. I would like to hear a lot of history, insight of of how you see Kendama in the past growing into what it is now. But first of all, Alex, how are you doing, dude? Well, first of all, thanks for having me on the show. I'm yeah. pretty honored. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm doing fine. Yeah, uh, I have a lot of friends the last uh, past days seen in Kadama scene. So and last week we had sweets on the floor here with the team. <laughs> and now we have Terra Kadama. So what yeah. do you want more? <laughs> yeah. Meeting up with old friends, talk a lot, and hang out. It's its the best ever. Mm-hmm. Exactly, exactly. We've all been wanting uh, an event for such a long time, these past two years. Uh, and to see this one kick off, you know, I think a lot of people, of course, like, you know, hats off to Sweets, Matt, and, and Cody Grizz for putting a, an amazing Twitch stream together because that's the way that everyone around the world could take part in the the euro kendama champs that went down it, uh, they did good with that man it was a lot of work i was yeah. there helping them set it up and everything and it was just like damn like these guys are going in they brought it, the gear everything it all in, everything you know it all, it was, professionals was so mm-hmm. <laughs> and also i kind of felt bad for them at the same time because oh yeah like matt was just stuck up there, man. He he was just there. Yeah, yeah. He did have moments where he came down and hung out for a bit, and then he'd come back up and whatever. But yeah, for right. the most part, he was just on the stream. Just he was the main get, man. Get it out there for all you nerds around the world. Exactly. So hats off. So uh, of course, everyone knows uh, our, our brother nerd Rod over there was on stage, was in in the mix. Alex, were you were were you there? I was there. Yeah, the whole yeah. weekend. So, the whole yeah. weekend. All right, nice, dude. And I got the uh, no job, so it, for me it was watching every game, every player on stage, yeah. walking around, talking with everyone. I don't Hells, need yeah. to judge, so I got all the time I want. So yeah, it was a free weekend for me, and it was amazing. Yeah, yeah. dude, yeah. And how many people turned up? I actually don't know the number, but we were guesstimating around three hundred. Right. Yeah, it was, it was a pretty large crowd. Yeah. Especially with like how long again there's been there's been no big competition for a while. So to have that yeah. happen, well, I mean, especially battle at the border wasn't too too long ago. In that Europe, was a pretty big one. In Europe, though, yes. In Europe, exactly. Not, not like that. That's true. Yeah, there hasn't yeah. been a big one like that. And this is the biggest ever for Europe. Mm-hmm. Which, was it? Uh, yeah, biggest. it was. Yeah, because uh, maybe not on people, but on competitors. Mm-hmm. Mm, okay okay yeah, right, right, so right. Two, two days uh in row only competition so that it's the largest one yet yeah so, yeah. yeah dude oh, amazing man. Uh, thank theo for pulling it off absolutely man. yeah yeah dude he, he did, put in so yeah. much work getting that together 
Yeah. And right when I showed up, he was just running around doing this. Like, we got to get this and this and then this and this. Like, we had the jam and stuff, but he's like, yeah, you know, like, I got to get this box going, got to get yeah. this time together, like all this stuff. And so I was just running around trying to help him out as much as possible and still hang out with all the, the Euro squad and stuff. And right, right. So there's so many homies here. And like, the Euro scene is incredible. It's like, I've, it's, I've been away from it from, for way too long. <laughs> yeah. Dude. It's beautiful to see everybody and just yeah. see the level of progression that's been happening here and stuff. It's and like, crazy. it's actually fucking crazy. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. It's, dude. It's, just looking at the, of course, like the open, but like the freestyle is what really like made me like see how, how yeah. everyone is such, such a high skill level. And comparing to the freestyles that I've seen, of course, the biggest one catch and flow in Japan that you can catch. Mm-hmm. And it, I saw that, like, I feel like catch and flow, like the first few groups are just like, you know, just messing around, like fun. Let's like get on stage and be a part of the event. But they didn't really yeah. throw down like some of the tricks were like, ah, OK, there's more like, you know, yeah. just waiting around for Kozarov to get on stage. And then it's like, oh, OK, yeah, now we, now we can get into the heavy wow. hitters. Right. There's, there's yeah. some people throwing down stuff. I remember you being the first one up at catch and flow the one year, buddy. Oh you were up there throwing down. Oh, my God. Oh, the, maybe what was it? First, second year, I, I thought, no, second year, I yeah. think I feel, I feel like I was like, oh, I kind of did pretty good, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that last to throw one, some, some MJ hammers for damn sure. That, that last one, though, man, fuck, I remember during the sweets, the, the sweets, yeah, that's like a tongue twister, the sweets twitch during that shit. And they were talking about the, when, the, when the freestyle was happening, they're like, yo, whoever's first, no one wants to be first, no one wants to be first. And I always remember that time. I was like, I know the feeling. I was first. That one year, I forgot what it was, like the fourth one or third one or some shit. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That Yeah, that sucked. That sucked. But yeah, in any case, know. so that's when I noticed like in Europe, in Europe, like uh, they were thrown down like from the get go, from the beginning, from that mm. first group, they were like, not only like taking it serious, but strangely at the same time, just like having a good time with it. Like, totally. pers- like was everyone drinking, Rod? Was everyone just getting loose, Rolf style? Everybody was drinking, but for the most part, I think, yeah. I mean, right. they, they were at a, a venue that had a bar and everything, and we were allowed to just buy drinks and whatever. And so, like, seemed like majority was, that was something of I was age. To do is something I've noticed. I think that is the Euro scene is a lot older than, mm. like, especially than the Japan scene or even like the North American scene. There's a lot more kids yeah. involved with the events, which is awesome, and we all love to see the kids there and get the future, like you the know, future involved and whatnot. But yeah, very interesting to see a bunch of adults that are like, you know, put in some time to this kind of thing. And yeah. so a, I feel like that has something to do with the level of play, you know, is because everybody's there on their own time. And like, you know, you, you know that your time is worth something. So you're putting in an effort if you're, if you're there kind of thing. It's not like you're just all casual, like, Oh, mom dragged me to this event. I got to go up on stage. For a bit. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, there's like, there's a lot, there's, I don't know. It's a, it's a different sort of passion for it. I feel mm-hmm. yeah. that that yeah. the the older generations have not even older, you know, like you know, twenties and of age, you know, oh, totally. legal drinking yeah, yeah. age and shit. Mm-hmm. Um, dude, okay, okay, Alex, you know, we see the room in the background. You know, I'm mm. the amount of Dama is like mine is fucking nothing, dude. Bare bones compared to the racks that you have. But you know, I, I can't do like that because in Japan we got a lot of earthquakes. So that's like such a no-no to have Dama's like anything, standing on anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You got a couple standing out there. Buddy. So the hooks, you know, just for show. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just so, the background on a green. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's full. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just fucking Photoshop a bunch of extra ones in there. That's actually not real. <laughs> Copy paste. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so <laughs> Alex the Supernog. Um, let's, let's, I, I think there've been a few times where people have, uh, tried to pronounce your name and like saying Roush Royce, let's get it all straightened out right now. <laughs> let's hear it from the man himself, Supernog, the, the correct pronunciation of me, because I think like I even probably switch back and forth and I'm like, which one is it? We need no, to hear it. Roush. Yeah, it is Roush. 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 Okay, so it's like a little, a little at the beginning, right? That rouse. Yeah. <laughs> nice. You can skip the G and the H, so you can say it rouse. Okay. It's the, it's the sound like, uh, yeah, it's hard to explain. Yeah. yeah. European yes. can, 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 can say it, like yes. Yes. they can, can do it. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. All Americans have trouble with it, and I don't mind you. 
No, no, okay. Did you well, call me? Hey, I'm still listening. What you? What is up? So yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so of course, you know, you've been in the game for like, dude, such a long time. So when did you actually start Kendama? Uh, in 2009. 2009. Okay, Nine. and. And I know back in the day, you know, you were, uh, I got, you got some clips when you were like rollerblading back in the day and shit. Yep. So is that one entry point that you had to Kendama through rollerblading? Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Because, and how did, uh, how did that happen? Yeah. Because of uh, the, the American skaters went to Japan to the X Games or uh, Asian Games. I don't mm-hmm. know, LG or whatever. Yeah. And they bought some Kendamas to bring them back to America and started to recording clips. But there was one guy that was Frankie Morales. I follow him for 20 years already. And he was he made two edits, which is in his pool, uh, in his pool area. And he, like a pool snooker one. Mm-hmm. And he played some tricks. And I was like, hey, damn, that's look cool. I need to get one. So, and that's where it all started. Go to eBay, buy an Kenama. Found in Yoko, you know, Yoko from my oh, uh, UK. Warburton. Yeah, and yeah. I bought a Kenama from her. Yo, Yo- oh, shout out Yoko, dude. Yeah, <laughs> shout out Yoko. Yoko back. Yoko was like, she was Japanese, but she like lives in Europe, does she not? Yeah, she lives in yeah. the UK. I don't know if she's still living there, but mm-hmm. yeah. And she was a huge like connection between the Japanese and Euro, like even the North American scene. She was like selling a lot of JKA kendamas online and stuff like that. So if you if you were looking for like Ozoras or like Nugans and stuff back in the day, there's a good chance that you found her page online and like and yeah, shout out Yoko. Big DK sixteens. Yeah, DK. That was my first kendama. So yeah. <laughs> we all remember, maybe not all of us, but um, you know, maybe I didn't see that Frankie Morales original video, but I definitely saw him make some cameos in the very first Kendama USA edit that they put mm-hmm. on YouTube. Yep. And mm-hmm. now so, uh, it's just crazy how it comes full circle and sweets now has yeah. him sponsored as a mob. Yeah. It's very crazy, yeah. So, like, oh. that's and that's so dope for him to, I, I, I'm sure, to be like, you know, still in it and like yeah. seeing, you know, a company who's still pushing the game and like throwing respect back to it. Like, that's how many amazing like years later. He's just like, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll get a mod, sure. I'm gonna <laughs> throw some palm trees on that, bitch. <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, Dude, okay, yeah I okay. hope I, uh, I'm gonna meet him, uh. At NACO this year, but I don't know. Mm-hmm. Because he lives on the West Coast, you know, so. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah it'd be good to meet him, actually. Cool. It would be very nice because it all started because of him. And I don't know if he knows. So <laughs> I, yeah. I want to tell him personally meet and thank him. Because, yeah, yeah he, he's still a god in waterblading, man. He's still blading today. It's yeah. crazy. And yeah. he kept his own style and it is amazing to watch that dude. That's awesome. Yeah, it is. I would really love awesome. to hear that. Yeah, man. So, so watching that, you know, like I know for me personally, when I started getting into Kendama, like I didn't really have anybody to play off of, to, to teach me and stuff. So how was it in, in your area? Was anyone around playing Kendama too, or were you the first one and you just had to just figure it uh, out yourself? Actually, Jeffrey and I started on the same date. Jeffrey from, uh, from Raven, from Raven. Jeffrey Van Rasta. Dutch yeah. Kendama. That's yeah. Yeah. So we started on the same time, but we didn't know from each other that we played in Kanama. So one year later, we met and said, hey, nice. <laughs> we do play Kanama too. So, but he lives one and a half hour drive from me. So basically, we started making videos and, st- and stuff. And of course, we had some connection and we asked things, but not in the beginning. That came, I think it came later, maybe two or three years later. That we finally get closer and get more friends and visit each other. Mm. But in the first two years, we actually on our own. I was on my own to learn everything. So uh, going to uh, YouTube, finding all the videos I could find and mm. try to do the same thing. So the first videos I saw was uh, from Katsuaki Shimadeva. Mm. Extreme Kendama. Extreme Kendama. Yes. And the other videos that he made. Yeah. Yeah. That, but man. he was so clean and all the he got a really nice style and it I yeah. I picked it up at JKA style. So yeah, I started learning then from them. So yeah. two finger spring and the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> it's not history yeah. yet. You know the book isn't closed yet. <laughs> no, no, no. 
So, okay, okay. Let me actually swing back to when you're talking about your, your first Kandama. Of course, your collection's right back there. I have to ask, do you still have it? Uh, I have no idea, but there's a lot of uh, a black JK. A black JK. TK. And I got a blue one. I don't know. You had a black TK for your first one. That's wild. Yeah, it's not here. Does this thing even have a hole? You're I, stabbing I think, at a black hole? I think that Kanama died over the years, so... <laughs> Oh, yeah. Just disintegrated into the ether. <laughs> it's hard to find something it's between like, three, four hundred kadamas. If you take these shelves down and cut the drywall, you might find a dama or two behind the wall. <laughs> it's like within the plaster, like fucking. No, just I got it. Turn, oh. Turns out all all of the the, the whole structure of the house is made of kadamas. Okay, this is the one. And here it is. This is the okay. one. Look how beaten up it is. It's still good. Dang, I'm I'm holding history right here. Dude, this is in good shape for a first dama. Yeah, what 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 we did what did we do back then? I Just guess. only cupping and yeah, around USA, around true. Europe, around Europe, uh, around Japan, around the world. I managed to beat the shit out of my first kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, same. I'm now gonna play this for a couple months. That it is too hard to play a black uh, TK16. Yes. Yeah. So yes, after that, is. I uh, I got a blue one. Mm -hmm. It's totally busted. And after that, I only bought uh, bought. Uh, green Ozoars. Mm. Okay. <laughs> I think I, I slammed 50 or 100 Green Ozoars to the floor learning Space Fox. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, definitely. One, week, oh. one Kanama, okay, get any more. <laughs> yeah, I'm just playing so head. much, only just, in the backyard yeah. trying to do Space Fox, and yeah. oh, okay, it's gone now. Just hugging yeah. smash, bring oh, me another. Yeah. Having smash. So oh. Yoko, Yoko was very happy. Uh, oh, yeah, you happy. must have been Yoko's number one customer. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's awesome oh it man it's wild being in this room seeing so many pictures of this for years and stuff yes, and right here and looking at all this. we were in here yesterday and I was just like yeah yeah but actually <laughs> what, what you see here it's actually a book every Kanama has almost its own story mm -hmm. I can tell they eat about those but it's weird man yeah it's, no it, yeah yeah so it like especially i'm sure the ones that like you've created yourself you know of course you got the aluminum the the, the boss up there and shit there's so many so many um yeah. let's let yeah. let's let's keep going with our the beginnings dude because i know that also like bill Boke is is somewhat popular maybe more well known did you mess around with the bilboke at all before the kendama in europe no never so i started kendama and a couple of years later i saw jeffrey with a bilboke and i asked him hey where you get that from so yeah from uh bilbo, bilbo, bilbo style yeah bilbo style dot com in france yeah so it was already hard to talk with that guy because he couldn't barely speak English, mm -hmm. so but I managed to to pull a to pull a couple Bilbo style Bilbo's from him. Yeah, he started throwing those, and uh, yeah, they're pretty nice and pretty fun to learn. Wasn't and, wasn't that guy? He was like he had another job, but he would just make Bilbo's on the side whenever he had time. So yeah. you would like make an order with him, and then he just like when he had time, he would slap you up together a Bilbo, and yeah, that's you know, where you go. Yep. Yeah, because I remember wanting one so bad back in the day. I, I would still buy one from them, honestly. But um, in like trying to get one, and it was like a whole like six month wait or some stuff, something like that. And you're just like, what? But but I want to flip a bilbo now. Like, come on. <laughs> yeah. What the hell? That course, you have to wait a couple <laughs> months when you have time. So sometimes I order four or five at the same time for <laughs> also for friends that really want them because yeah. I get a, a great connection with him. Mm -hmm. Sort yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I, I helped spreading some Bilbo K around the world. Yes, absolutely. Right. right yeah. Because after, I, after I see one from Jeffrey and I tried one, I thought, oh, I need one. Mm -hmm. So, so, dude, so Jeffrey, was, think, Jeffrey uh, helped out a lot. Yeah. 2011. Okay. Yeah. So that's amazing. Yeah. Jeffrey helped out a lot. And another, if everyone doesn't know, you know, another uh, a sweets, the original sweets legend. Uh, I think he was the orange. Tama? No, he, was, he was the no, yellow. Was the yeah. Oh, yes. Of yellow, course. I have orange. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> the orange is right. Dude, yeah, that's, that's some OG shit. If you go back to the old fucking Ken Alex and Dutch Kendama, like. Yo, going to back and forth. Yeah, dude, there it is with the lion oh, logo emblem on the bottom. Oh, yeah. So this was mine and this was yeah. Jeffrey. I got yes. one of those that you can see in uh, 2014 last the time. Pro clear. 
Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's pro clear. Oh, <laughs> not funny even to play this in Japan. Yeah, you, <laughs> yeah. You oh my gosh. So if you stick it, you can hang it upside down. Oh, yeah. Totally. It's pro clear, you know? Yeah, That's, yeah. You I still got my, my Owase pro English. clear right there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it is like indestructible, that paint. Like, yeah, you dude. could like, I don't even, you put it that lasts. on a wood chipper, I think it would still come out the it other lasts. side. It's More like, right. It's so interesting how it like it, it changes. It goes back and forth. Like I haven't played with it in like such a long time and it's mm -hmm. back to like being like a normal Tama, like it's kind of like slick, but like you mm -hmm. feel like a little grip to it. And it's like, I bet like if I jammed it for like a good two days, it'd get back. Mm. So this is a bill. Okay. Bill okay. There it is. Ooh, hand turned. Those gotta be expensive, dude. With the super uh, dog. No, it doesn't. It was only, I think 65 euros. Or 65, yeah, that was it for this this piece of wood. It's so huge. and But it's all walnut, so it's still nice to play. It's not that heavy, but it's a little bit bigger. So you only have one base cup, and you have some stall points over here. <laughs> so you, know, you can stall it <laughs> over here. So you have some little stall on a bird. Yeah. I think it was, I, I, it was, yeah, 2011, because I went to Japan to the KW, no, it was uh, JKA Festa. Yeah, the WKO. Uh, this one. Uh -huh. I got yeah. an invite from them to come. Mm -hmm. So Let's I went it. to... Oh, it's a... It's, it's a... It's I don't know, can you show On it? the wall, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, like a certificate. This is the invite I get by letter. And I'm a Festa. By email. No, by email, so I printed it out. And um, yeah, if I want to come to Japan... And take part of the competition. So I was pretty stoked. And I, I, I don't know, but Yoko set it up and talked with JK. So maybe there are some people from Holland mm -hmm. to, to get over. So that was pretty nice. Wow. <laughs> okay. Cause I, yeah, I was just about to ask, like, you know, of course, you're well known in, uh, in the US, but in other, other countries like in Europe, I'm like, wonder in Japan, but if the JKA is inviting you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I bring my Bilbo K uh, in my bag, mm -hmm. and um, oh, and first we did a competition, but we um, had a little sesh. Yeah, we had a little sesh. Uh, I kicked out in the first round, lost from a 14 year old Japanese champion at that moment <laughs> in the first round. So, okay, thank you, bye. So I can enjoy all the game. I, I, I wasn't prepared at all, I didn't know how good yeah. those kids are, and it was amazing to watch mm -hmm. some of those uh, European and, uh, and Colin. They came pretty mm -hmm. far that time. In the, in the I next was too. That was my he first was there time too with yeah. Brad. That is when we first met. Yeah, and Eric. And Eric, mm -hmm. yes. But um, Jano san, he calls me, calls my name, and I heard Bilbo K. So, oh, okay. So, one and one is two. <laughs> I think I need to go on stage. So, Grandma and Bilbo went to Jano san, and the crowd was, I think, 200 people, 250 people. Yeah. So, and he wants want me to perform with the Bilbo K on stage in Japan. So never been there on stage in a wild country for mm -hmm. the first time. So I pull off five, six tricks and then the crowd goes, ah, and I remember that. That was that. Epic. You got your classic to like swap. The yeah, we can build up that tricks. Yeah, 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 that was. And Jeffrey recorded it and put it on YouTube. So it is somewhere, some, some, somewhere. Mm. So it still is. All so right, there, was a, there was a nice performance nice. for me the first time on stage I did a freestyle with the Bilbo K so, yeah, yeah dude that's probably, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was probably a first for everyone to see a Bilbo K uh, yeah, playing in freestyle sure. dude, actually so uh, and in Japan as well so mm -hmm. they didn't know that the Bilbo K exists so Jano was uh, telling the history mm -hmm. a little bit so okay, he's born in okay. the 16th century and some guy in 1900 he brings the uh, Bilbo K back to Japan and yeah. create the Kendama out of it Mm -hmm. Right, and right, right. Uh, and that's where it all started in 1905. Yeah. Yeah. Leave it up to the, the Japanese to make the shit more difficult in ways so yeah, that yeah. you can become better. Like, you know, it wasn't a Tama. And I've heard that in oh. wood turning, like the Tama is like the hardest thing to make. Yeah. To make it perfect. It's the same Beer, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 But yeah. they did so, definitely help out with the cups and that just, it made the, the, the trick list just infinite. Oh man, but dude, yeah, to go back to YouTube, you and Jeffrey, like hats off for like creating so many videos back in the day, like dude. 10, 12 years ago, you know, you can scroll back and see so many of like short, like almost like Instagram story posts of just like, like 30 mm -hmm. seconds 
of, you know, Alex, you doing like, you know, like world record, like how many like J sticks in a row or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So many of those. Was anybody Mm -hmm. else doing that? Like, were you in like competition? Like, oh, you know, Jeffrey did Uh, like 13 J sticks. I feel uh, I I was a little bit in competition with Jeffrey because in the beginning we are not that close. So yeah, I watched yeah. him and he watched mine and he gave me some tips and uh, he wasn't that happy that how I throw my videos on YouTube. <laughs> but I'm yeah, I need to throw it out. So um, later on, it get better and better and yeah. Mm-hmm. So you have to start somewhere. Absolutely. I didn't know about editing at all. So uh, most of the time, I used the standard editing program on the on the on the Mac. Yeah, whatever you on the PC. Yeah. <laughs> <whatever. laughs> <laughs> and later on, I made, I made the tutorials because there was a need for and people wants to see how yeah. I do it. I got questions. Hey, how do you do this? And yeah. that. Those were some of the first tutorials I ever saw. Yeah, me and, uh, too. I managed that. Uh, that I, my my language is hard sometimes, so I have to retake, retake it ever over and over again. Mm-hmm. So I thought maybe I can put text in it. So I pause the screen, make a text, and so you can read what I actually do. Yeah. in between all tricks mm-hmm. to detail it out you know? mm-hmm. and uh, yeah a lot of people yeah helped out uh, with that style of editing and mm-hmm. yeah. that added that added to like the mystery i remember watching those videos that back in the day and i'm like why isn't he speaking and i'm like i just yeah. want to hear now i, w- I want to know <laughs> <laughs> made me continue subscribing you know and watch the next one that came out because i'm like maybe he's going to speak in this one and you know, this, but at least not in the in the in the tutorials. But you know, you did a few unboxing of yeah of the paw kendamas. I remember back in the day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and you were speaking yeah. there. Yeah, uh, paw kendama <laughs> and uh, the, spe- the first ever spec apply from from the man. Uh, yeah, Jake's dad. Jake's dad. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, Paul. Oh, you also. I remember just last the other night. I was like scrolling through doing some nerd nerd search and saw you know getting the the triple spike, the three spike. Like thrown back to like remember like like the Yumu or even like um Chrome yeah, did one right also. here in the paw the paw three spike the, but it's exactly. a paw three spike that was one yeah. of the most one of the most legendary things I remember seeing it was the Ken Alex versus the paw three the spike paw, I just yes. played a couple months ago and I put a longer string on it you got so update really upgrade spike. yeah but uh, yeah this is the one the only three so for every mate so and yeah so I got one so epic it is epic. Like you really mm-hmm. can see how the the, the, the swoop is going here. The swoop. And that's uh, the swoop. Yeah. And that's, uh, I think, something GT is still running. Those yeah, swoops. they are. Of course. Of course. For people who don't know, Paw is, yeah, Jake Ween's father. That's his moniker mm-hmm. for his wood turnings that he does. And he he's made... a wood turning <laughs> legend. Is he? Like, like dude, he, he's a teacher now. He teaches wood turning and stuff. And Whoa. he makes these crazy, like, with, like milk paint, like ribbed vases. And bosses, however you pronounce it, and like there's like big, long, deep ones, and like like ones that are like a ball, but there's like this tiny little hole, and he gets in there and like hollows that thing out. It's, okay, okay. I got to go visit his shop. We went and had a fire at his place, and and that stuff when I was in Tennessee at Jake's place, I had the honor of hanging out and hearing yeah. some of his stories and shit. And he's like an airline pilot. All these crazy, crazy stories, man. It's wild, wild what? human being. Shout Damn. out, Pop. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Pete Wings. Yeah, Pete Wings. Yes. That's what it was. Oh, dude. Oh, I got man. another one. This is a very special one. This was the only, yeah. the first ever uh, Spectre, Spectre play. Spectre yes. Wood. Yes. So uh, Jake is dead, made as well, on order mm-hmm. after I asked him. Because we were on the Dama Fest 2013, and his dad showed up. Mm-hmm. So, and the competition was was full in, in, in full sand mode. So, I was outside talking with Jake's dad. I missed all the competition. I was standing there for two hours just talking about wood and how I love Kendama and stuff like that. But, and I <laughs> true, don't, a true nerd. I don't just talk it about yet, wood. I really have a mad time with his dad. So, so and after sick. the competition, um, I asked him if he wanted to make me this one. So this is the only spectacle by he he made. Mm-hmm. Full can. He made a lot of stamas. Yeah. But he made a full can for me mm-hmm. as well. So uh, this yeah. is uh, this so is sick. crazy. It's one of the, the first, spe- if not the first spectral ply Kendama ever made. A full can. Yeah. And I remember seeing seeing this in particular, the way, like where he drilled the hole in the Tama, how it's like off kilter. So like the, the wood grain is on like a 45 degree angle. 
That's like not, I don't think any other person has ever done that. I think it's just been the parking dollars that have been like that. You see the middle is, it is off center. Yeah. Like. So real trippy to play with, I think, but. Yeah, especially from like what we know nowadays, everything being horizontal yeah, stripes like and a, stuff. But that's just like you know we we're talking about how good he is at wood turning and shit and whatnot. That just like shows like he he doesn't need the wood grain to line that shit up. He's just like, oh no, that's the center. Yeah, we're talking <laughs> about the, the unboxing videos. When I unboxed this one, the whole box was filled with nice snippers. Oh yeah, with pieces of wood, wood that he made from this kandama. So I open it up and it's like. Fuck. <laughs> Thanks, Jake. <laughs> it's like a but glitter bomb fun. package. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you smell it, and it was so nice to open the whole package. And you really uh, think you just come, came out of his barn. Yeah, made, yeah. You, know, yeah. you smell everything of, oh yeah, of the like, wood and like the a little whole black experience. And the yeah, yeah, just yeah. Straight Not to the just, dome. <laughs> <laughs> and all over the floor and then into the back yeah. just like a yeah. that shit up and it's like oh let me save some of that yeah right if the world ever mm-hmm. ends like you use that to like uh, start a little fire yeah only if the world ever ends the, the only the only precious, <laughs> the precious chips right there bud <laughs> so alex not yeah. only do you have like of course uh a bunch of videos uh, up from back in the day of just doing tricks edits yourself double edits with like you know uh jeffrey tutorials and stuff you also have a few painting you got into painting custom tamas also so yeah, correct. Wh- why did you start painting tamas because i thought um, i wanted to show to have something special not to make it extra grippy or whatever but just just a kendama with my name on it and after that i found out that maybe i can make some more from friends for friends mm-hmm. so i started making uh kendama with letters on the sides and just spray it over and stuff so i make a couple for uh i think for matt sweet for jake for uh, matt rice Mm -hmm. and for dave mateo he made a video of it he was so humble when he received it it was so nice it's also still on youtube (laughs) the unboxing and yeah i think it was nice to to have a couple and to do it but it took me a lot of time and work and effort in it so yeah i think it was only one year I painted my kanamas and after that, I'm done with it. And is that where you got the the name like Ken Alex from? Is that when you started using that? No, I started from the beginning. Yeah, yeah, to use Ken Alex on my videos on YouTube. That's cool. Because yeah. you want to know something funny? I don't know if I've ever told you this. Is that the reason I started going by Rod Dama was because you did the Ken Alex thing. I was like, well, Alex already has the Ken, so I'm going to take the Dama and I'm going to go the other way, Rod Dama. Yeah. So that was what made me think of it, and that's why I've always done that. Yeah, no, I started from the day one when I'm making videos, uh, naming my videos Ken Alex. Mm-hmm. And it, was, it became my first name, but the account YouTube is, uh, is starting with Supernox73. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That is my nickname from the past when I hang out with guys, with friends and stuff like that. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so, so, yeah, can we hear a little bit more about the Supernog and how that became a thing? You know, it's on your legend mod now for sweets. It's, yeah. it's uh, your handle for, yeah, your YouTube channel and, and Instagram. Turned onto that big old Bilbo K. Yep. Yeah. So, <laughs> there wasn't, um, I mean, I, uh, there was a, there was a, uh, a spot, was, uh, I don't know, is it Carnival? A a carnival. Yeah. Yeah. But you can go in for small rides and yeah, yeah. go yeah. out and pull triggers and don't know what comes up. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. That kind of like a fun house kind of thing. Yeah. And yeah. so there was one lady, that, she burns wood on everything. So I came with my Bilbo and asked <laughs> if she wants to put my yeah, name yeah. on there. So, you know, <laughs> nice. two, 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 uh, two, two euros. Two euros. Golden. No, no, Euro. It was Euro. Yeah. It was Euro. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so, yeah. Super Nord, it came, I think I get that name when I was 21, I guess. So that's a long time ago. We're hanging out somewhere in the neighborhood behind, uh, after work, uh, after dinner. We came together and play a bit, little bit uh, soccer. But we have three uh, people that named Alex. Mm. And so I get that a nickname back then, but it started, uh, but someone was telling a story and it was funny. Like it's still good was my reaction, but I said super not because super is, is great, 
En nog in Dutch means stil. Ah, Zo is stil cool. Zo, ik kom er super nog. Zo, so, from that point, they call me super nog. Zo, so, they get rid of one Alex. Zo, so, if you call super nog, I was the only one that reacts, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, nice. So and this is how it all started. So, That's yeah. cool. I like that. Yeah. Still good. Still good. <laughs> yeah, still good. Dude, that is amazing. It, it, I and like it's, that a lot. Yeah, yeah. It's not only like a dope like nickname, but like also mm-hmm. just like a saying, you know? Yeah. It's just like, yeah, yeah like a motto. Like everything's still good. Like just keep it going. Yeah. I got, and uh, I used that uh, because uh, that summer before I was on the camping. And there was a guy from the south of the Netherlands also there, and he has a uh, he has a crazy accent, and I like that. And he was calling that if there was a joke or whatever, and he said "super no." <laughs> so <laughs> I take it a little bit over and bring it to back to my town, and uh, those guys are calling me "super no." Okay, okay. And, uh, nice. and I still talk to the guy that started with. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I know the guy. We have a conversation of some once in a while on Facebook. So, Man, so it's, it's it, for him. It's just like a, a small inside joke, but now it's like, hey, there's this kendama that kids have all over the world. People have all over. <laughs> it says super nog on it. Yeah. Yep, yep. <laughs> oh. I don't know if he had the connection. We didn't talk about that, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Still, awesome. still good. Still cool. So, super nog. so, so you just going back to our little timeline here. We were talking about the beginnings of Kendalex coming out. Meeting Jeffrey, making some videos, going to Japan, meeting Yoko, getting out, starting the starting this collection. Um, at what point did you start doing like the Kendalex plastic and, and the alu and stuff? Was that the first kendamas you made after the painting thing, or was there one before that? No, I think I did that after the the painting. Yeah. So then I I wanted to have, you know, I saw a, a picture of a of a guy in Japan and he made. For his study, in a, he made an iron kendama with a chain on it, a little oh, chain. What? And I saw that picture on the internet. Still, it's still, still up there somewhere. I don't know. Damn, iron kendama. It was an iron kendama and it's full playable, but he made a chain on it. So That's it so was, sick. It is hard to, I think, play oh, with a chain. Yeah, but it, it has to be. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, it was uh, for his study. And um, I was like, ooh, what if? You know, so mm-hmm. I need to figure out uh we had to get a company to get a conversation yeah and what i really want so i bring an ozora i say hey man i want this thing this thing i want to have in metal mm. was like, hey what is it so i play a little bit and i talk with him uh, how long i already played and uh, my love for kendama i said okay we can do it no problem so nice and, and so so the aluminum was the first one the aluminum aluminum no he may first make one out of delwin Okay. So it was a black Delwing, full black. Yeah. Just to try out. Mm. And um, yeah, he made it. I visited the place. I said, hey, this is perfectly. It lo- really looks like an Oshawa. All, yeah. all the details were on it. So yeah. I was like, okay, let's go. So I ordered 10 of the aluminiums and started on, on Facebook posting pictures. Yeah. Hey, soon I have these. You want to buy them? Dude. And then you and can, then, you can pre order all... it with me. And then I get all the payments. And then I said, okay, you can go for the order. And then he makes some. Yeah. And I, you know, I make seals, I string it up, yeah. I found in some strong strings, like yeah, uh, the, the 100 fishing kilo fishing wire, you know? Dude, and yeah, still yeah. Break, yeah. Still break. Yeah, <laughs> Those, yeah, they still broke. I remember when, like, uh, when I, I forgot how, but Sue, I don't know if he traded with you, Alex, or if he bought it from somebody else, but Sue got one back in the day. And I sold it to him. You sold it. Okay, okay. Yeah. I think I sold it to him, yeah. Because I remember, you know, he, Sue used to have a massive Mugen collection. No, no. I traded in a year when, when I think, uh, KWC. Yeah, yeah. 2014. Yes, yes. When you were floating bombing me that year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I was yeah, there. I keep reminded your face because it's, I know you from back then. So, yeah. <laughs> but I, I, have, I trade with Mugen. I yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah, I, I remember Sue, like he was collecting. He had so he had all of them. He had a backspace. And I, Rod, you yeah. saw it when you were there. Oh, I remember. It's it's one of my edits, actually, there's a quick shot of it from one of my Japan edits of just looking oh at all the long yes. stuff. On yes. And I remember like before we drove down to Hiroshima for that, like Sue's like, I'm gonna bring some of these. He's like, 
I'm going to trade with some dude I've been talking to in Europe. I was like, Oh, I'm like, okay, cool. Like, <laughs> and that's what it was. And that's how he got it. And then, yeah. So going back to the, the aluminum shit, yeah. How he had it. And you even gave him like all the strings. I remember there was like 20 or like 30 extra strings. And I was like, why the hell is so many strings? <laughs> and Sue's laughing. He's like, shit breaks all the time. <laughs> oh my gosh. It was so amazing to play. So slippery. So scary at the same time. So it's much so weight. Fine when you slap a but yes. on that Oh <laughs> man! <laughs> the, the big trick you can do is uh, if you if you really smash that uh, servado on the skin, that it get uh, it sounds like one. If you do a UFO, you really and it goes out of the ball. Then you start a UFO. You yeah. When it turns in a clink, you oh. know that sound. It's like a samurai sword. <laughs> like, really, it, it, it's so sick. It's epic. I love and, that sound. So. so, so it was, it was just because you made it just because you saw a picture online and you're just like, what yeah. if just curiosity Yeah, and you wanted one. And then we all lost our minds and had to get one. I think yeah. I sold over 200 of those. No way. Worldwide. Yeah. And when was it, it? When was this? What year? Do you remember? Yeah, 12, maybe uh, 2013. I can find it on my phone. Where is it? <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking at this news article with the the plastic one. It's 2012, so it's at least then. Yeah, it's up at the top right, July 2012. Yeah, 2012. That would have been when you when we went to Japan. Was in July 2012. So, so there. Yeah, and I uh, 200 uh, of those things are out there. They are indestructible. So yeah, they're out I, there. I think, and I made 50 uh, Dell Wing ones. Like the, the totally okay. white one, or yep, the yep, yep. red, white, and blue. And I, I made one for Sebastian from Kendama Europe. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the guy that also can talk Japanese. Yeah. Mm. So he wants a red one. So I made one red one, and he has that one in his collection. That's so epic. Full red. I want the red one. <laughs> I, I have the white one still. That's like one of yeah. my most traveled kendamas is my Kendalix plastic. Because every trip I've had, I've had it with me until my last couple because it was just packed away. And I, I fucking was so mad I didn't have it in Mexico. I'm telling Alex because I did. I finally went scuba diving. I didn't have a Dama to play underwater. Oh my so god, like that would have been it. footage of underwater, and I had like a pine cone or something. I was juggling. I was like, <laughs> "Fuck, where's my fucking?" <laughs> Wishing it was a Son of my <laughs> So mad at myself. <laughs> so you made the mini ones too, right? Mm. Yeah, the mini. Uh, ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Exactly the half. So when uh, normal kendama was eight or sixteen centimeters, this one was eight. Mm -hmm. So the ball was three centimeters, like this. Like yeah. This. Mm -hmm. So it was exactly fifty percent of a regular kendama. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I bring that to the Dama Fest for the first time. Yeah. To show to selling those on the, on the Dama Fest 2013, I guess. Those yeah. things were so sick. I remember being so excited because, like, yeah, it's that fifty percent size, but it's got the hundred percent of the weight. Yeah, yes. normal it was yes. in totally it was 75 grams. <laughs> the whole, the whole <laughs> but it's still landing. So yeah, yeah. You can do all the cups and spike it after. It's like mm -hmm. what? It really works. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It's so it's sick. Th that's definitely like the, the big key with like having tiny tama tiny kendamas. Like, you know, I've I've had so many like wood ones, and like the tama doesn't spin well when you land on a cup, like you have to be so precise, use a hundred percent of your knees because it's just, just one motion can just wobble it off. But having mm -hmm. that weight is really what makes it playable and so much fun. And yeah, then you, you, you like went on and created those dope videos with the black background like a yo-yo player was, those those too. were very impressive for the time when they came out so how mm -hmm. did how did those was I, were for, okay the ones i remember talking too much i'm just going off um like ken garden you versus the ken garden versus like you said like the the triple spike the, three spike the stove the, the voodama doll the stove yeah, yeah. the, oh, the yeah. voodama doll i made myself yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You made that before sweets. The Fudama, the edit. I made so I made it myself. Yeah. Okay. And that was you were saying that was mostly done in here, right? In yeah. It, no, that was uh, in my living room. Oh, okay. Yeah, on the on the long wall. Yeah. Um, I just put up my backdrop and mm -hmm. I have one spot on the ceiling that. that yeah, was on yeah, I don't yeah. have extra light back then. So. Mm -hmm. How did that come about? The stove or the I think the stove was the first one. 
Mm. So I bought a I bought a stove. I uh, had connection with Jake already, and uh, I, I asked Jake, "Hey, what if?" No, he wants to to make an edit with me. So I did some tricks, sent all the clips to Jake, and he made it that edit. And I think the stove edit was the first one. Yeah, yeah. for any of you nerds listening that haven't seen a stove, just in case you're wondering, this is an old sour mash product that he he custom like molded a literal stove, like a kitchen stove. Uh, that had holes in it so that you could play it. And if you're looking, watching the video, you can see it here where there's a hole for the spike in the corner of the stove, which makes it interesting. So it sits like a diamond shape rather than a square, but then it's got like the little hook on the back and the burners and, and the little string hole and shit. And yes, this is, that's the stove. If you were wondering now, you know. Yeah, you can do uh, pretty rare tricks for it, but uh, it was hard to find a hole. So yeah. <laughs> these, these things are weird to play. It's almost uh, getting lucky to land it in. So yeah, some of the like... in the video, I was like, how the fuck I landed that? You know, but <laughs> yeah. yeah, it went in after a handful, like yeah. pretty clean turning like this, like like spinning, and then I only have to do a spike. Yeah. So, but, and I did some c- couple of stalls. I tried to do a uh, stills. So you did amazing stills. Too. Too, so I, yeah. I put it up there. Oh, it stands. Okay. Let's do it. So I did a pull up stills on this thing. Yeah. <laughs> and he used the deck for the end of the video. It's, it was yeah. epic. So, yeah. so I did. Okay. And that I was away. some of the, <laughs> <laughs> those are some of the most epic videos from back in the day and still honestly, still influential and like obviously influential today because you see people like, like Adrian Esteban, for example, who's always got that black backdrop and he's like filming like exactly like Ken Alex style, you know, and that makes for like a very concise, like view of the trick, which is perfect for somebody like Adrian style, where it's very technical. You have to see like the string, the beat, all the little pieces, because if you don't see each piece, you don't know what the hell's going on. And even if you do, you still don't really know what the hell's going on. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, but yeah, so it's really cool, man. Like I, I remember watching those and just being like, this is the sickest fucking video. That so ever, good. So you know? good. Yeah. I got a funny story of this one because I was on 2013 on the Dama Fest and the video was already made. Uh, Jake has a little screen on his desk where he's selling all the kendamas and that video was, was from this kendama, the, the, the stove edit. Mm. So a lot of bunch of kids are watching those videos and I'm standing, so I'm standing behind them. <laughs> so, Whoa, that guy is really good. <laughs> so they're all three watching now. Oh no way! It's you. <laughs> so they were clever guys. They didn't know what to say. You know, it was so funny. It's so awesome. <laughs> you got them good. Yeah. <laughs> so it was the first time also that uh, people starting recognize me. Yeah. And, uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Means normal people like not the, the number players all know already know who I am. But mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, so yeah. I think it. another point of like just the production that it had, it made it feel like 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 ser- like it was serious it's not just like other videos that you know when most of us shoot our first edit it's just like in you the know, background just going in front of your couch going for a walk having yeah, fun yeah yeah in the kitchen yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, this we was shit up and we are doing fucking tricks exactly no and i think b-roll. like that's what like but no but there was b-roll and it was so sick i think just just mm. the whole aesthetic of it you know i think the <laughs> opening b-roll is just like having the fucking stove swing back and forth i think yeah, it's no, like you're right there was it, yeah. it, it, it was just so great that the the text of course you know we all know jake as being so great and masterful with a lot of the the design that he does even and the music it, was dope it's yeah, totally quick on yeah. That edit also. and that's mm-hmm. and it goes to like the ideal of grain theory gt of it being like not for kids anymore like we're trying to make something that's fucking cool and then we all the older generation can resonate with because this thing is that it's not just for kids it's not just this tiny little like I don't know, like a, like a fucking GI Joe. I don't know if, you know, and that's another thing I think that, that really was influential in creating like, you know, a a scene for people who are like, let me make this more serious. Let me make this into something that isn't just cool music and some dope tricks. Like, of course, dope tricks were there, but again, the, the, the artistry of it, that's what made it. And I remember that stood out so much when I first watched that. Like, damn, yeah. super and dog. After that, <laughs> after that, the video came out with the three spike. It's the same, it's the same, the same level. It's, yeah. it's the same uh, darkness. Yeah. Uh, it's the same vibe. And yeah, yeah. Uh, after that, we did a pill version. Yeah. 
So he started off with, uh, what do you do? Take the blue pill or the red pill? You know, that, <laughs> that sound that's talking in front yeah. of the video is really epic. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, the, the sound and the same editing, it's crazy. Those three are my, I'm, I'm the most proud of those three from back then. Yeah. And it's still nice. So, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Just, yeah, they are super nog. Dude, they are super nog. <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah, throw it out. Dude. <laughs> Straight up, some of the most influential videos ever made in Kendama, honestly. Right, right, right. It's, exactly. And to see them, you know, th those are oh, like... Thanks, Jake, for making it happen. <laughs> Jake, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. A part of it. A part of that history. Part of that. If you didn't get it, nerds, yet, like, that's that's your nerd homework. Super Nog. Yep. Uh, yeah, yeah. On, 100%. That's some nerd YouTube. homework. If you guys have not seen these Ken Alex versus the pill, Ken Alex versus the stove. tree spike, Ken Alex versus the stove. Versus the Budama doll, like oh my get, gosh. get in there, go do yourself a favor, go watch yeah. some history and yeah. see why we're saying it's still super nub. <laughs> sweets, sweets legends. All right, when did you get in contact with Sweets? When did he uh, ask you to be a part of the team with Jeffrey? How did you feel about becoming a a legend while all the other one like he's like well, here's this awesome list of pros. Their team was huge, and then you guys are actually going to be legends. How did that all happen? Well, I just played for uh, uh, Sunrise a little bit, a couple of years. So Sunrise is from David Marchand. He was a juggler that uh, made Kendama in Europe, and he sold a lot of Kendama. He helped out oh, yeah. a lot of uh, brands like Chrome and Sweet Kendama. In the beginning, to to, mm -hmm. to send them over some Kendama for sale, to sell, you know. And David's the man. Yeah, David was, was the man. After that, I uh, didn't got any contact in 2014 with him. So it was hard to talk with him about the new shape and stuff. But he's keeping trying to get it, uh, the same shape as a TK-16. Mm -hmm. But I, I feel that the world changed um, because I still like to play Ozoa more than Sunrise Kendama. But I help him to spread out the love for Kendama. And he disappeared on the background for a little bit. So... Mm -hmm. I was like, well, okay, I'm not going to play anymore with Sunrise. And um, one day in 2014, I can't remember the exact date, but Christian Fraser came at me. And I didn't know, but they already asked Jeffrey if he wants on the team, Legend team. And But separate, Christian asked me, hey, if you're not playing for Sunrise, do you want to play for Switch Kanama? I said, oh, hell yeah, why not? You know, I didn't know what exactly they want from me, but I'm still super not. So I'm always editing and dropping videos. So maybe that's the mm -hmm. case. So I keep spreading love of Kanama. Mm -hmm. So I said, yeah. So I joined the team in 2014. It was actually Christian Fraser that asked me. Whoa. <laughs> the legend whoa. getting the legend. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it takes, I, takes one to get one, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> at that point, were you playing? Have you tried a few sweets, Kendamas at that time? Well, I played Sweet Kendamas from 2011 when he first painted the Tamas in his barn. Do you remember he had a box of Kendamas? He walked oh, out yeah. of the shred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He painted Kendamas. From that day, I already bought Sweet Kendamas. Yeah, you have the ones with like the yeah. stars on them and yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah, those Woodburn ones. That was one of my favorite Kendamas for the longest time. But earlier, so I, I did competitions on the uh, Sweet Media online competition. And me okay. and Jeffy would keep winning those yeah, every videos. time. Yeah. So yeah, it was like all the, me or Jeffrey. The jumbo ones and shit. Yeah. So oh, three okay, had to okay. send kena three kendamas every time to Europe. And it cost a lot of, a lot of money, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so on some point, three banned me from competition. <laughs> oh, no <laughs> shit. We keep winning it. Yeah. It's fucking true. It's an <laughs> idiot. So, but that, yeah, I played three. <laughs> I have a sweet heart from the start. Sweet started with making kendamas, you know? So. Wow. I, it, it was meant to be, to be on the team was, in 2014. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then how did and you feel yeah. to get put onto a legend category right away um, and not like a pro or anything? Well, they're calling me legend since 2011. And yeah. I was like, okay, it fits well. Why not? You know, yeah, I'm not a pro player. Like I play four, five, six hours a day to practice to win a competition. No, that does not mean, mm -hmm. you know, I was uh, some different, I, I was built different. So I make tricks and make it look easy. And I wanted to learn people playing the Kanama, you know? So that's why I make starting in the beginning to making tutorials and stuff like that. But I keep posting shit. Yeah. And I still do. So still yeah. to this day, yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> Fuck yeah. In the last couple of years, I only learned new new age tricks mm -hmm. from style. Oh, I mean, we're yeah. all still trying to catch up. I mean, yeah, it's, it's hard though. It's it's seriously. Yeah, it's really going to uh, four flip, five flip, six flip. No, I'm not. I'm not. I want to do a two flip maybe, but fucking clean, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. I don't, I, I'm my goal is not to go to six flips. No. Yeah. The yeah. end of it. Because I, I, I can't even count them. <laughs> yeah, like, it was four or five. Oh, yeah. what? It was six. It was actually 12. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I don't care how many flips. Like, if someone else is doing it, I'd much respect for landing. Oh, flips, totally. You know, totally. Yeah. yeah. That's on the side, but yeah, it's a whole nother level of like yeah. that and the hand eye and like being able to spot those, you know. Yeah, and yep. yeah, like, like I was gonna say, like for me personally, I've been trying to hone my triples down yeah. because, like, you know, how many years that I've been like avoiding triples, but now nah, I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't need to good that. enough, but now it's fucking super deep in the meta that, like, you know, yeah. you need the triples, otherwise, you're fucking missing out on a whole bunch of shit. So, and then like hanging out with the GT guys and stuff, they all. Tio especially would just look at me and be like, Trip J. I'd be like, fuck. And then I have to sit there and grind one out. Sometimes I get a first try. Sometimes it takes me a fucking hour. But we, we get it. We I normally it. do it in the game game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> like yeah. one, two, three. It's just a simple trick, but in the game game, mm -hmm. I can land those. So. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I'm going to feel me. No, it's not that going to happen. But, mm -hmm. but uh, oh, yeah, they asked me for a legend team. And at the same time, uh, uh, Christian mentioned me that, he, that they asked Jeffrey as well. <laughs> so after that conversation, Jeffrey and I were having a chat. So, oh, fuck, we're on the same team. We are both legends. <laughs> so we needed to make a legend edit. Wow, yeah. So I went to Spike and Issa where he lives. And then we start recording. Yeah. And yeah, there was a legend edit board. Mm -hmm. but, and then, yeah, there was. I always thought that that was crazy that Jeffrey Van Rasta was from a town called Spike Nisa. That's Spike no in the name. Yeah. Yeah. Spike <laughs> in the name. Yeah. Because a spike in, spiker is a nail you, you slam in the wood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a spiker. Ah, okay. Spiker, so. yeah. It's just a nail. There you go. Hey, dude, uh, my first uh, Japanese car was a Honda Spike. Yeah, I remember that too. I was going to say nice. that. That kind of yeah. worked well. And that was like <laughs> not planned at all. I forgot who, I think it was Dave Mateo who pointed that out on that first like Mugen Muso tour when I first met everyone. And we were like driving in a bus heading back from the, from Nasukogen where we were all like hanging out doing the, um, uh, 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 the camping trip and we're coming back to tokyo and we're just talking and dave loves cars and shit and he's talking about all these like different types of cars and like as we're like driving on the highway he's like oh what the fuck is that oh shit and you know i was like oh yeah i have a car and he's like what kind of car you have i'm like oh it's a, a honda spike he's like spike holy shit and i was like i didn't get it at first i was like oh yeah that is pretty dope <laughs> yeah that's your, like i never put the two together that's awesome. Oh man, but uh I talk about like like legendary people, legendary tricks. Like one staple trick that many people know you for, Alex, is that is that swing pull up UF one turn UFO. How yeah. long was that a, a trick that you were practicing and was that like your master like goal to get that because you do them now like so ridiculous. Yeah, it's a kind of safe trick open up but uh when I was, uh, uh, it was 2012, when I was in Japan, we have a session on one night uh, with uh, Katsuaki Shimedera, with uh, um, Tomoya Mukai. Mukai san, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Akimoto san. Mm -hmm. Akimoto, yeah. So, um, Akira, probably. So we, yeah. we, we played there. So I went to uh, Dude, Tomoya Hachimaya Mukai Hachimaya. first, and he asked, can you do uh, the swing Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I found out that he did it a different way than Katsuaki san did. Yes. So but he, he turns the, the, the can the other way around. So I asked um, uh, Katsuaki, and he did the same, but then he turns it the other way. The other way. So there are two possible ways to do that trick. Mm -hmm. So I choose for the boat, and I try, and I get the one from uh, Katsuaki san. I did yeah. that, and that I wanted to learn. So it took me, I think, four or five weeks to get a proper one. So yeah. and then I started trying, trying, trying. And then after that, I tried to space walk one to in UFO. <laughs> so, yes. And it, it, it comes right after. So when you have the movement and the pull, yeah. you can do it rather with space walk or lightning drop or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it, it, uh, I think a couple of months maybe to get it really solid. 
Yeah. And I also always put that trick in at Ken Games because oh, yeah. <laughs> it gives me trick. a point for sure because nobody else can do it or do it, <laughs> it proper. Yeah, yeah. I think because like you're mentioning, right, there's, there's a few different styles of doing it. I know personally myself, I hold it like I'm going for like a one-turn airplane. And this is, mm-hmm. I learned from like a Nobu, 430 Nobu, like that's how he does it. And I see like you pull up and you just have to have the timing right to like give it a hook. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so it stays horizontal as it spins. And I've, I've tried okay. like, like Hajime, how he does like that swing back almost around and really whips the Ken around. Yeah. Like, and yeah. I, I don't understand that one. I can't get it to hook and swing back. And that's the way you do it. Yeah. So it's ridiculous. So I can't do like from, from spacewalk because I need it to be like straight with me. So, yeah. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. You have to, you have to really have to, to, to turn your can around. And yeah. It's hard to do it from a spacewalk, but Pakistan showed me how to do it from a spacewalk. So he right. started with the little cup up and I don't know, but they're holding the can always. When, when they do, Normally, a uh, European or American, they grab the can like this and then throw it. Yeah, from the but base Japanese side. guys, they hold it in a normal grip mm-hmm. and then throw at it. So I saw it. It was a little cup, was a little bit on the angle, like maybe five degrees from from the body. Uh-huh. So and I started learning that, and I, I I figure out the can was coming this way, totally horizontal. And the only thing you have to do is like you push it with your with your wrist, you do it's the movement, and it really goes flat mm-hmm. so from that point i was like okay i got it yeah <laughs> but i i learned from the masters oh yeah you know i i pay a lot of attention for that trick how they're doing it and I keep trying and keep trying and i know what to do but you have to get your momentum and your feeling mm-hmm. your hand eye coordination to get yeah. it all done muscle <laughs> yeah. memory yeah. yeah oh my gosh i made That's a tutorial uh a couple of years later on the street in the street studio Yes, on YouTube as well. I was actually trying that trick yesterday. I was trying to get it out of a full scramble to up to that to get it to inward lunar, and I couldn't. He's sitting there going, "Just use your wrists," and I'm like, "I'm fucking trying to use my wrist, damn it!" I saw fool him that hard, and I was like, "Okay," because I'm fucking damn it, I'm trying to get it to fall out. Whole start a fucking engine over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh shit. We we skipped one actually uh, to go back to the Ken Damas that you've made. We skipped one. We skipped the boss. Oh yeah. Let's it's hear about the boss. How that was created. When it was created. Ah, oh, so sick. I think that was created in 2013. I talked with David because this can is made in Europe in the same factory that the Sunrise Kendamas were made of. And um, yeah, Jeffrey and I were agreed that um, uh, the Emperor Kendama was way too big. Agree. <laughs> yeah, I mean, not, not it's anymore. it's not anymore, but this one is a, it was it's, it's such an awkward like I think it was it felt so long. Look, this mm-hmm. is the Emperor Kendama, and yeah. there's Kendalic on the side. Yeah, yeah, so I, uh, that I was picked, Yoko that wrote that. Yeah, that was Yoko. Yeah, was and Yoko. the seal no. they needed Yoko to make a bigger it, seal uh, for that shit. <laughs> it looks dude, so that, weird. That is, that's the funniest part of those. I always love it. So oh, I got it side by side, but this one was really hard to play and a little bit heavy, and you get tired after 15 minutes. Yes. So, and then we have a normal. I was going to say for reference. Oh, kaiju? Yeah, the, the, kaiju. the Emperor is pretty much a kaiju. Yeah. Oh, the just Kaiju Tama is massive. Yeah. Well, the Kaiju is just updated shape, essentially, to the Emperor, right? So it has have, the fatter cups and is the Tama it, to match. Is is the Kaiju a triple XL, like a Chrome triple? No, no. Chrome triple XL is massive, bigger. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about yes. like another like third bigger. I was about to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I see people playing kaijus and I was like, I don't know. I've never yeah. messed with one. This is the 2XL. 2XL. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. The 2XL is the it's, kaiju. It's the kaiju. Yes. Yeah. So the yeah. XL is one more if, X on top. Everyone, if you've never seen or played a triple XL, like, and you've played a kaiju, it's like... A, the wrecking ball, right? Yeah, wrecking ball. That is seriously a kaiju. That That's a next the, level. In the show. That's honestly... I like the kaiju, but the triple XL is my favorite. <laughs> it's I don't know why, but I just love something about hucking up. It's like a whole fucking tree. Oh my gosh. You just tap that shit and you're like, what? oh my god. <laughs> the the danger involved. I remember oh, like, yeah. like Philip and Torko enough. like throwing that shit around doing moonwalks and shit back in the day. And it's like, God that. damn, yeah. I'm scared just to pull up uh, an airplane. So um and the normal jumbo was 25 centimeters high. 
and um, mm-hmm. yeah, it was With performers and stuff. It was like performers. So we wanted to make a kendama that was in between the emperor and the performer. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we came out with this shape. It was the same as Ozora, but then one and a half time bigger. So the normally Ozora ball was uh, eight centimeters, mm-hmm. sixteen millimeters. Mm-hmm. This one is eighty. Mm-hmm. Uh, eighty, yeah, eighty millimeters. So it's it's just one and a half bigger. Look at the bevel. It's yes. not even that big. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. You, you got this sweet premium string on there is that what that is yeah yeah oh i forgot about this string dude silk, the silk string <laughs> me, me and mj are probably the biggest advocates for this back in the day oh dude i still am not back in the I, day yeah, I, 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 <laughs> I, i'm not so much anymore dude i i liked it when it's fresh but then it like as soon as you start playing it and you get some hand grease in there it just turned into a mess it can yeah so um yeah we, we uh i think uh we sold a 150 Maybe 200 Boscan Damas back then. So was that being sold through? I sold a couple of there. Hmm? Through Sunrise? Or were you selling them? No, we selling them mm-hmm. ourselves. So okay. just by Facebook. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. They're, they were made by Sunrise, though. They were made by Sunrise, yeah, gotcha. but the name wasn't actually involved with our brand. So yeah, right, right. we come up with the boss. The boss. Because it was a... Yeah. Uh, and then the logo on it. badass and you guys are bosses. <laughs> I remember when you guys first came out with these two. I have, I think I still have it. You gave me a business card or something. Yeah, that I has, still have those. It has the boss logo on it and shit. And then it has your guys' names and stuff on them. It was kind of sick. I had it in my window of my old apartment okay. for the longest time. Oh, there it is. There's an old one. This is my Dude, yes, the, the Ken Dalex card. Nothing is impossible. Never give up. It's so sick. Dude, there is so much history in this room. It's insane. I don't know where to bust it, but I still have this one too. Oh, the Bilbo Style card. BilboStyle.com. I wonder if he still makes stuff. No. No way? Eh? No. That's too bad. Oh, he's got like the Buffy oh. Vampire oh, Slayer type uh, this is the one. font? This is the yeah, one. it's just a picture of the boss on it. And on the back side, my name. And then, and, yeah. yeah the boss what a badass business card you know if you're in japan handing these out you don't do the the clan you whack that shit on the like, oh my god the you're scare them come on dude. that card <laughs> oh, well, being like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tossing totally. him around oh shit. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh man, yeah. And with the boss kendamas too, I remember um Alex bought a bunch of those. Um Alex Smith mm-hmm. for Terra and we did some Terra painted the battle scar ones and yep. stuff. I still Whoa. have mine of that, which is pretty sick. I've played the shit out of that thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. Battle that's where they are made for to play the shit out of exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like they, to hear. They could withstand it as well as like to see the the white Tama come back, you know, around that time. Mm-hmm. You, yeah. it was hard to see the white times. And I remember like when Ozora finally released the the premium with that premium paint, that little sticky ish mm-hmm. paint in like 2014, I think it was. Yeah. Um, yeah that, that was the was first wild. time that you could get a white Tama again, because yeah. before that it was only Mugen. Mugen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who was no, there wasn't white Ozora, but the only you can uh, get, you only get them if you join the competition of the JKA. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. every, I think twice or two, two, three times a year they have a JKA competition and uh, or uh, Yamagato make uh, Ozoas in a, spe- a specific color like the lavender color mm-hmm. is also just made for the competition so yeah. if you take part you get this one mm-hmm. yeah. so the same is with the white Ozoa. Yeah. so that was after Mugen did the white one so. yeah. yeah I remember they did that that was really crazy I always wanted I was like what the fuck I want to go to these comps and just get like the cool kendamas. Mm-hmm. What the hell? Me, yeah. uh, let me buy one. Take my fucking money. Come on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah you guys it. spend a lot more on a flight and get all the way there and go to Ooh. Just- eleven <laughs> hour flight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dude. Okay. So yeah. So much history with the collection. <laughs> so much. Too much. How many? Old, older kendamas, like weighing in, like the 2014 kendamas to the recent ones. In your collection, I'm guessing the older kendamas are uh, more. Well, this is also only Ozora up to here, and here starts. I don't know. You can see it. Yeah, yeah. This is TK16, all the line still here, Fuji. and then I have Shin Fuji standing over there. So, and then 
Ze kruis, Sintje kruis. Ja, dan komt top. Dit is only Ozo is wel. The whole above. I think, ja, net als custom Ozo was. So the whole top shelf is, uh, is this one. Is Ozora. So this is Ozora till TK16 Shinfuki. So I have two shelves of only Yenka Ekenamas. How and many how many Kendamas are in one shelf, if you could guess? I don't know. <laughs> Do you want me to count? Oh, okay. Probably. Uh, I would guess almost 100. 7, 14, 28, uh, 21, 28. There's quite maybe, a few Ozoras maybe, uh, on 30, that shelf. 50. I think 70. So this one line is 70 kendama. So this is a uh, two shelf, mm-hmm. 140 kendamas. But then you also have like the stack of sweet stuff here that's just like shit. Yeah. ready to shred. Yeah. Uh, you can yeah, you can see that in the video there. Yeah, yeah. We're all new. All, all, all in boxes, never used. Yeah, just ready to shred. It's the same as my. I bought this one three months ago. It's my 2014 Paul model, uh, legend model. And I bought it from a website, I think a couple of months ago, from the USA. So I found it. And I was like, no, isn't it? Do you still have those? Yeah. <laughs> and I bought it because I only have one left and it's standing uh, next to all my other models. But I wanted the second one, you know, just to yeah. make sure oh, yeah. Yeah. I always have one. So <laughs> searching down my own Kanama after eight years. Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> funny on it. To buy my own Kanama bag. <laughs> That's crazy but that they still have, 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 yeah, that stores were still stocking. Crazy. Them. They have, yes, we Kanama and another one. I don't know which color. I think maybe the Oasa one. I don't know. Mm. Gray one with the, with the photo camera. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the Oasa oh, one. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. The camera, yep, yep. Oh, dude. So it, could you pick a top three Kandamas out of that collection? Your most best, the best, best and uh, the, the most rewarded kendama for me personally. Yeah. Well, it's I got the so yellow good. auto. I, I make my first done with it, so that one has to be in. Oh yeah. This is oh, this is yellow auto, and I engrave a first down and then Supernox, of nice. course. And I got this one in 2011 in Munich. It was the first EGC ever I went to, where they was playing kendama as well. So mm-hmm. Foyt and the guys from UK came along and they make a, a little competition. Mm-hmm. So that was the first time. And this one is very important for me. So it's the first time, I, yeah, the first down yeah. I got from JK. So It's epic. And yeah, the one that I showed already. Uh, and the park and It's the park and armor, this one, because I have a, a huge story with him. I talk with him a lot. So this one is my gem, mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And then... I really don't know where so many. Man, there's even more Kendamas downstairs. There's another case of them down there. Yeah, a couple of hundred. Oh, no, 100. Uh, another 100 down there. Another 100. There. 100. <laughs> oh, my God. So these are just the ones that you like to look at. I got one special one. <laughs> I hope it can be before everything. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's Slowly, it. you need help? <laughs> <laughs> this one, I, uh, I don't know. You can read it. Samurai. Yeah. So it was a, this was given on a, on a, this was a wedding kanama from Japan and from the family Tomonoi, I don't know, not Tomonoi, but um, I, I slept in Japan for a whole week when I was in Japan for the first mm-hmm. time at the family and they gave it to me. So this was a very special, so my first, yeah. first contact with a whole family where I stand for the whole week where I could sleep and hang out. Yeah. We didn't even talk straight, but by a computer to translate because <laughs> They know don't know English. I didn't know Japanese, yeah. so it's hard to communicate. But the date written on there is June 6, thousand nine. So this one is very special to me as well. And it's was that for? Special. Why did you meet up with this family? Just like a homestay uh, Yoko, program? Who, Just for? Oh, okay. Uh, because of Yoko, uh, she set up a place to stay for me and Jeffrey. So we went, and uh, the family brings us to the competition and back, and we show we have seen some uh, places in Japan where they live. So we went to uh, uh, Universal Studios with them. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Dude, oh, yeah. Down in Osaka. Yeah. Okay. You're in yeah, Osaka. because the the the, the son uh, worked at Universal Studios back then. Mm, so okay. Oh, yeah. I because yeah, we I got invited to come to Universal Studios too, but I was going to something else. I didn't get end up coming. Yeah, 
You're heading oh, to like. Yes. I think that was when Kimochi took me to Matsumoto. I think that's why. Yeah. <laughs> so all those ones, all the all the all the kendamas that are still in cases, like do do you play with those still, or are they just for no, collection? Those just in, look- in cases are still brand new. Yeah, so you're not going to break it. And the cases are brand new. And not going to break the seal. Come sweet still, because uh, yeah, collection. I mean, at this point, why break the seal on a on a Nozora when you got, especially when you got a stack of these sweets? Like, there's like amp shapes, there's splices, there's legend mods, there's fucking anything you could want to play in there. There's, yeah, and name a clear coat. Another fun <laughs> story for me. I I'm not buying just one. I'm mostly buying four or five or six, and then I wait match them all. Ooh, okay. And the one that is out of the range, I sell. So one <laughs> yeah. giveaway for free. <laughs> it depends on which competition I am and how many people there are. And so, how many kendamas do you think you've given away over the years? I think over two hundred, man. Yeah, which is crazy. It's another collection. If I if I if I keep all yeah. my kendamas from day one. This wall would be filled as yeah. well. <laughs> yeah. It's the same. I it'd, don't be know, like, it'd be like a hoard, it'd be a hoarder's house. <laughs> yeah, but I think everywhere. I have to be uh, I have yeah. to have an extra fire insurance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If I have them all in like wood in one house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. There's also some shit in here. Like if you guys have ever seen the books that Void put out, um, mm. like the spike, more knees. More knees, um, yeah. Yeah, and all that stuff. So these were books written by The Void, who was a guy who ran the BKA, not only the forums, but also put on all of the European competitions and stuff for a while back in the day. Um, so he put out these books that are basically just how to do Kendama tricks. Yeah, click Beyond the Valley of Kendama, Spike, Mastering the Kendama. And there's all this artwork done by Donald Grant, who is another OG Kendama legend. If you guys don't know who Donald Grant is, you're slacking, go do some homework and fucking find Donald because... So true. Mm, mm. Anyways, um, so Alex has this original fucking Donald Grant drawing right here, which blew my fucking mind yesterday. I didn't even know this. you could get this. And it's like the artwork from that book, but it's the actual drawing. And you won this in a, a raffle or something, right? You no, said, I right? won this on the competition at the BKA. Ah, BKA British competition. Kedama Open, BKO. Damn. So, I don't know, it's a little bit, this is how we start, and then you do, you, you swing, and then go in, just yeah. an airplane move. And it's all in the book, so <laughs> yeah, I'm super happy. Uh, Dude, I like, yeah, so I like cool. the, like, the Janko sh- shorts he's ha- he has on, too. Oh, yeah, those are some nice shorts. <laughs> I like, nice I like baggy. the one single little Jimmy Neutron hair sticking up. <laughs> <laughs> that that's so cool that that was a prize. Like that is such like a specific kind of odd prize to Dude, put out there. It's so epic. But yes, at the same time, yeah, like that's that's amazing. Man, one funny note about this book is that I actually have a trick in this book. In uh, in this uh, the one that's called Click Beyond the Valley. This is the third one. And Rod I'm just style kind moon, of scrolling moon through circle? real quick, trying to find it. It wasn't a moon circle. The it monkey? was actually the one where you like, uh, I'm, I've done it in a lot of edits, a lot of freestyles and stuff, where you swing it out here. Let's let's read the description, the shall spike we? pop? So, yeah. It's called Rod's Lighthouse Trap, which I really, really didn't want it to be called that. I, I knew I could come up with something better, but. Void went with. I guess he had a deadline that was more important than the name of my trick. But anyways, so it's ball grip, a lovely trick created by Rodney Ansel. Start as you would for a one turn lighthouse, but extend your index and middle fingers from the ball hand. Let the Ken circle these fingers twice, with the string wrapping around them as it goes. As the Ken rises up for the third time, in brackets, the string is very short now. Tug to give it an extra bit of rotation. Now let the base cup settle onto the ball. However, to give yourself enough time for the landing, you'll also need to turn your palm face downwards as the Kent lands. And so basically it's a sideways lighthouse where the string is tensioned around your fingers, wrapped twice so that the, the Kent is out sideways pointing this way. And then I would unwrap it and throw it into a spacewalk or whatever, which is funny to look at now because this was, I created this when it was like a two finger string kind of thing. 
which yeah. so you would wrap it around your two fingers twice and that would be the extent of it but nowadays if i try this trick i have to wrap it four times or use my whole fucking hand okay was, I'm that one, yeah yeah right. like literally get you gotta get my elbow in there to fucking get this thing going these days and i don't even play that long of a string yeah. <laughs> dude that is so dope that you have yeah, that in there very cool. that's amazing i remember back in the day kusa you know selling those books and shit and seeing yeah. them on the site oh man they're very cool man very cool book, a little, little piece of history. And yeah, Alex actually also has some uh, some old Japanese books in here. We were looking mm. at yesterday. There's one in particular um, I want to show the cover of to the nerds because this one is fucking cool. I posted it on my Instagram story, but look at this photo. It's like a step by step pull up of a, it was it an airplane? Yeah, it is an airplane. So you can see like every like frame of motion, but it's all put into one. So it looks like some crazy caterpillar kendama thing that who knows what the hell it could make this into an anime monster or some shit. Even the, the yeah, person's no, face is all like you can see them going up and down. It's kind of crazy. Oh, who's that fucking talk bot? <laughs> no, I think this not. is before the talk That's before. One. Yeah. Yeah. That looks like from like the eighties or some shit. Old book. Yeah, but that is a, that's a really dope uh, cover picture that they have. Looks like, yeah, like a centipede or something, but showing each oh, motion just for an airplane. 300 yen. I don't see a, a year on Ooh. it, though. And it's, is it a tutorial? Yeah. Oh, pretty much? It is. It's uh, Kendama ga ippai. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of Kendamas. <laughs> that's a lot of Kendamas. Yeah. Dude, dude you know what's sick, though? We were noticed. Look at that fucking tracksuit. How <laughs> badass is that this fucking JKA full track suit? Dude. <laughs> if they have it, I buy it in, the, in Eastern. Yeah, I would absolutely. <laughs> that shit is killing. <laughs> oh, dude, God. I would still like that. With the old JKA logo on your chest. Yeah, so, dude. So, and he's got matching shoes for it? And who yeah. knows what's on the back with this? It's like a massive logo. It might. Be, be it dope. might just have a fat kendama on the back or something. <laughs> Yeah, man, these old books are very cool. Like this one's obviously a little bit older than the Spike ones and stuff we we're just talking about. But yes, it's a different totally. era, but like history nonetheless. You know, right, right. Like right. As we move forward, we're moving further and further away from these basics and more into the realm of cloud bounces and loops and pinches and fucking quadruples and instead of doubles and fucking octuples and all this bullshit. Which, stuff. of course, of are are fun, but you know, you got to know your roots, everyone exactly that's what i was getting at exactly so these books are forever going to have a place even though they're 100 years old yeah be, it's, yeah it's really especially it's like cool you know this is pre-internet so the way that you could get this information out to people if you didn't know people within the jka for people in japan who didn't have other people playing kendama but you were passionate about it you had to go to yeah. a fucking bookstore and then hey here's a book that you could pick up to learn some yeah. dope tricks where you know then 2014 yeah. comes around and all we got is Supernog releasing tutorial videos, you know, and Jeffrey, and, yeah, and yeah, Jeffrey <laughs> as well. And then we just keep it rolling. And, and now we see a lot of the companies, Sweets, I remember Sweets was, you know, the old, mm -hmm. like when he had his like tank top and his like tiny shit mustache on his, say, you know, the headband, the headband on with the, his ha the hat sideways, you know. Little punk, yeah. <laughs> punk rocker, Scott, the, the Scott kid. Rim glasses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's who he is at heart. But yeah, dude, those so those books are really, really cool to see. I should fucking see since I'm in Japan, see if I can find any of mm. that. I was gonna say it helps if you can read Japanese for sure with these yeah. old ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, there wasn't a whole lot of English ones until the BKA ones from the void. Exactly. And then even then, you know, he you know, kind of took it on his own, created the BKA. Today, come on. Created we're different getting, shits. We're Who's that? Street cream over here. Ice cream truck? No, no, that is no ice cream, but <laughs> There's a, it's a street, street sweeper we're ripping by. He's, he's on his way not, out. I, I can't hear it much at all. Yeah. Huh. You got clean streets out here in the Netherlands, as you can hear. Of course. You've been in it for such a long time. Again, we see a lot of your collection. There's a lot of the older damas. You said specifically Ozora. And for the old heads, like that was the kendama that you could pick up uh from anywhere and you will know the quality is going to be the same as the last one that you got so yep. it was uh, like a no-brainer uh but then also you know it we were in the realm of learning all these tricks with a solid tama things have changed so much shapes and stuff what do you feel about the whole design of the tama with all this tracking all this color 
Yeah, I think it's perfect because uh, I meant I, I bring that uh, the tracking very seriously. So that's I came up with my orange model, like the tracking with the white, uh, red, white, blue flag, mm-hmm. and it helped me so uh, so much to track the Tama. So I first started to make an own. Uh, <laughs> I got an Ozora. It was uh, white, and I'm, I I taped a line in the middle to help out with earth spins oh. in 2011 already, and I made one line on the Tama like uh, the Kenko ones. Oh yeah, yeah. Get the stripes. Just a small thin line on it to help that's out. Same. Yeah, that's the first one. Yeah. Oh shit. It's here on the back. It's a silver-ish. Like, yeah, yeah, with just a black piece of tape as a just stripe. a black piece of tape to help out with tracking. And from that point, hey, it really helps to track your tama with something on yeah. it. But I think maybe a Sunrise started doing that. Yeah, I sometimes definitely the yeah, they had the on it. stripes. Yeah, they might have been the first ones actually. So the white with blue one was my favorite back then. But mm. um, streets also have the uh, the marble ones. Yeah, the marble ones and were like a, unintentionally can, like yeah. So you can see how many clips, and you see the whole, you see the lines of those marbles. So that really helped. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, man, it's really upgrade a kadama. You know, it upgrade your skills and help totally. out a lot. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Definitely beats a solid, just a black Tama, like your black TK. Yep. Just staring at a black hole, hoping you stab the right spot. Yeah, well, I came with this one, with the beat line. Yeah. So with the stripe on it, it really helps to do mm-hmm. those things. With totally. It. Yeah, and the white, the white ring around the hole as well. I remember thinking that one yep. was like, I was like, a black Tama, but you can actually see it real good. Just the O in a <laughs> So yeah, I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm happy that they find out that the stripe or whatever something around it it helps you out to level up more because um, everybody wants to do more flips than only one. So yeah. and if you don't have a line, you will always end up with one and a half turn and you spike the string hole. You know, yeah, that doesn't help, it doesn't work. So <laughs> it doesn't quite fit in there. No, <laughs> maybe you can stall like a butterfly, but yeah. Or if you're Alex Mitchell, you just yeah. hold it there. It doesn't matter. Just balance yeah, and flip it. it again, hold yeah. it again. Yeah. <laughs> How do you feel about um, the shape of kendama cups? They're getting pretty big. Is there is there like a limit for you where it's like this is too big? I think um, like like they have now for now, I'm good with how it end up uh, on the end shape and the one up control and uh, the Mugen Musu have already big cups, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But if they fit in the box, I'm cool with that. You know the box uh-huh. that they use at the KWC. If it is fitting in there. I'm cool with every kinama. So. There's, there's a lot of kinamas these days, though, that I don't, I don't think they fit in the box. Yeah, if you smash a little, it will fit. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Like, <laughs> but even even my pro mod is like pretty close. I tried to keep it within that realm because you know I have a lot of respect for Glowkin and mm-hmm. all that stuff, and I want my mod to be able to be usable at KWC, especially when I get to go back finally. Yeah, I understand. And yeah, but at the same time, you're like you know like a little bit bigger would be kind of nice. Yeah, you have to, I think you have to be growing that. It's a, it's if some party is going mm-hmm. to get a little bit bigger again. Mm-hmm. So then you almost got uh, the, the size of the the, the extra from uh, from Chrome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because at this point in the game, I feel like we've kind of maxed out the dimensions of a regular size kendama to the point where if you go any bigger, it just becomes a jumbo, and yeah. it's actually kind of detrimental to your play. Yeah. Like if you're if you're doing specific tricks, like yeah, it'll help you do a big cup. Yeah, it'll help you do a lunar because it's fat and the cup is the size of a cereal bowl. But you can't really get like those ken flips, those late flips, those taps are a lot harder. You know, like quadruple spins rather than a single. You know, stuff like that get a lot harder. So there is a sweet spot in there. Yeah, and a lot of I hear a lot of people talking, myself included, about maybe the box is a little bit irrelevant these days because we've already like felt it. Oh, you know, the box helped us do that, but we're at the point now where like we don't really need the box because if you go bigger than the box, it really doesn't doesn't matter. It's it like doesn't it's, make sense. It's your own it's your own choice at this point. Like if you want to get up on the kid and if you make it to the yeah. KWC finals and you get up there with a fucking emperor and you can do that shit, oh, all the power to you. Yeah, you get it. much much respect, but you can get the those money clips and but yeah exactly you're not going to be able to break and stuff would, like that mm. maybe the wings are easier but the hole is bigger but yeah but you're it not takes so be many, so long yeah exactly. because it i can do with a normal or with a with an amp shape you can do two, two tricks but 
because she did not time to do it with an emperor. You know, mm-hmm. it exactly. Make sense exactly. Come up with That's what I'm out. saying. Yeah. yeah. So there, there is like an, an organic kind of like law, basically, almost in yeah. place there, just based on like the amount of like styles of tricks and the style of the kingdama itself. You know, it's yeah. kind of interesting to see how we've progressed to that point. But I think um, they're already limited. For me, the kendama doesn't need to get any bigger. No. You know, the tatama is 62 millimeters nowadays, and there are 60 in the past. Mm-hmm. That one, two millimeters, you feel it, oh, yeah. but it's okay. You know, you still can hold it nice, and mm-hmm. the weight's getting higher because normally the average weight of a, of a tama was 70, 75 gram. Mm-hmm. If you have a cheap food, you have a 60 gram, <laughs> but <laughs> from the back yeah. in the day. Yeah. But I think 70 was a, was a nice average, 75. Mm-hmm. Average weight on it, and nowadays the tamas of 62 millimeters are going against 80 and 85. Yeah. And if you have bad luck, you have one of 100. Yeah, well, I, in my case, that's good luck. I love. Yeah, okay, but so, yeah, <laughs> but I still like to play not over the 80 gram. Yeah, that's fair. So if you if you are like me, standing for two hours to, to get to get a banger out, mm-hmm. and the and the setup is happy, like mm-hmm. 80 80 or 85 or 85, mm-hmm. you get tired earlier. Oh yeah, you know, it's just some point that you get get tired of playing Kanama, same as you use the boss Kanama, after 50 minutes, okay, I have to sit. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> you know, and the emperor is even more badass. Oh, yeah. you have to, uh, after 10 minutes, okay, I'm done. You know, <laughs> but with the Kanama, you have to, you, you should could play all day, mm-hmm. in my opinion. So totally. it has to, it, the, the heavier it gets, the bigger it gets, mm-hmm. it costs you more, uh, yeah, more energy, more energy yeah. to play. Mm-hmm. So. And, yeah, I always find it interesting too because not only have we been progressing shape wise and and like size and all these things, but we've also been expanding into different types of woods and using things that are like harder woods, a little more dense, a little heavier, you know, things like that. Which like everybody kind of likes the way they look, but then you know, like you end up with one. You know, a lot of my kingdoms that I make in particular are like you know we have a lot of nice mm. hardwoods and stuff, and they end yeah. up being. 90s. Closer to the hundred mark, yeah. you know, a lot of them, and so what it, sometimes over. Like I made one for this event that was vera wood with bird's eye maple, and it Ooh. was I think one hundred and fifteen grams all in just a can. Yeah, <laughs> dude, I picked up one of those from Kusa a while back. Mm. A beast. Yeah, but that was with the kaizen shape. So this is with my shape. Yes, yes, but, and which is much fatter. And I actually had it, the blank was big enough that I could boost it a little bit. So all three cups are even a little bit bigger than normal. <laughs> oh drill. shit. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's a banger. I'm kind of, yeah. I'm kind of hoping nobody buys it so I can play it. Did please tell me you called it like the Hulk or something. I call it Bruce Banner actually. So you're, <laughs> yeah. you're pretty fucking close. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hell yeah. There you go. Great. Yeah, I just think alike. Yes. There you go. <laughs> so Alex, uh, do you still pick up those old shapes and play with them? Well, I still need to get the six done mm. because I'm on fifth done now. Yeah. So I went to Panama USA and they had an Ozora. So I just bought a new Ozora with the lines. It's a sport, yep. sports yeah. on. And I asked Max if I can use uh, an Ozora Kanama with stripes to get my six done. Because for me, the stripe, the stripe really helped like we to get saying. the thing. So yeah. he said, yeah, you can use this one to get your six done. Nice. So when I'm ready, I'm going to practice a whole year on those tricks to get solid on those. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can do all the tricks, but to do eight out of 10, right, it's, right. Some, it's another level, you know? Yeah. And you have to do the six first tricks, you have to do eight out of 10. Yep. This is nuts. And then it ends up, yeah. uh, six, eight, six, five, four, Just so much three, pressure. Holy two, shit. Two. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's not like you're like at PWC or like in an open like EKC where it's like everybody's there just going, yeah, you got it. Yeah. It's like it was dead silent yeah and you got one guy from the jk just staring into your fucking soul yeah is it just one at that time bet, do they have like the, the side guy like sitting down to you next to I you guess you actually yeah they have right sometimes you're right and, and, and yeah three fingers, almost three three fingers, fingers, fingers. fingers. so uh, i'm allowed to play it down with, that. with the jk <laughs> yeah. so uh, this one i um, i'm going to i'll wait it play it a little bit so mm. to do all the yeah. basic tricks and the jk style tricks but this one is my latest version og kanama yeah. Oh, uh, and nice. you still are you still comfortable with a, a shorter string? Have you extended your string? Well, I got a 
That's funny because two weeks ago there was a new kendama coming out. Uh, they made a new kendama from Sweet Kendamas, and um, Sweet told me, "Hey, this is a new clear, so you have. I want you to smash it on the ground, <laughs> like you played a lot on your street in the backyard." So okay, I was like, okay, then I have to do spacewalks, right? <laughs> But I prefer to do spacewalk with four or five finger string. So I cut four five fingers off and make the string shorter. Mm. To get more comfortable in my spacewalk, because a shorter string, you have much more contact to the can yeah. and more, much more feeling of blending all those tricks. I agree, actually. I think that's why I still play a shorter string than most people is because I do so many spacewalks and stuff. It really like straight up speeds too. up the spin. It like makes it a little more controlled. Like you, you don't huck a moon circle and have to like wait three minutes for it to get all the way around. You know, it's like it's just yeah. And the tension, the tension stays there. You don't have to worry about it. You get a nice exactly. throw. Like yeah, mm -hmm. much the well, What I like is the space of your things, You know, and that with the shorter string, you have much more contact on the can, mm, especially yeah. with that, because yeah. it's way too longer. It's it, it the string gets yeah. bouncier. Yep. That's yep. probably why I was trying to whip my whole arm out when I was trying to you know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. because my string Use too your wrist! <laughs> yeah, and yeah. now it makes sense. You can do that with a two-finger string. With a, yeah. Well, I don't even know what I play. It's like a hand and a bit. That one's probably... My wrist isn't big enough for that movement. It's like, yeah, four raw fingers. But uh, the, <laughs> the one-turn uh, Luna or the, the two-turn airplanes and stuff like that, it, it will turns much better with a shorter string. Mm -hmm. So yeah, sometimes I, I cut the string off and play back to the old days and oh, get yeah. a shorter string and do all those tricks again. Nice. For yeah. me playing a lot of time, if I try new new style tricks and it doesn't work out, I come back and go and, and throw out some old style tricks, mm. you know, to get the good feeling and go inside stop it down after, you know? Oh yeah. Mm. Yeah, I need to land something before I, I'm going to sit on my I chair. Feel you. I'm like that a lot of the time. Dude. I'm a session. I'm kind of struggling, getting tired. I'm like, okay, we got to get one. Yeah, got to end on a good note. Yeah, you know? yes. I don't like. Yes. To, I don't like to just like keep missing, missing. Be like, oh, fuck it, and just go sit down. Because oh, yeah, if they land one and shit, and then and, yeah. and if it is one, you can do it all your life. I don't mind. If you land it, to yeah, me, you get good. certified, and then you're done. Exactly. That's good. Always close up with uh, mm -hmm. with a trick, you know, and exactly. And sometimes it happens you land a new banger and then mm -hmm. that's the most best feeling ever yeah Absolutely. yeah keeps the motivation i remember when up. i did the spacewalk uh penguin uh luna mm. Ooh. when i land that one it blew my mind and a lot of <laughs> more people oh yeah it. yeah you weren't the only one that's i was sure. the only one yeah <laughs> it matter everywhere in my apartment everywhere <laughs> yeah dude oh my god and all of the all of your penguin tricks are so so ridiculous and like you were saying at the beginning like say. doing those tricks and making them look easy when it's like everybody knows like you know oh he's going for it and then whap catches it in penguin i'm like wait like and like you're one of the people too that like i think that's the most clean like legit penguin style as far as kendama goes because for those of you who don't know like penguin the term comes from juggling right so it's when you're throwing and catching with your arms down at your sides and you waddle like a penguin Because you actually like have a penguin movement, and that's why it was called that. Yeah. But then with kendama, we kind of started lifting our arm up like this, and then it's like it comes up further, and now penguin is out here. And that yeah, that yeah. is specifically why when we do around Canada, we say there's no penguins in Canada, and it's top cup and super top cup because this isn't really a true penguin. You know, in my mind, I try to say that a true penguin is at least below the nipples. Yeah. You know, below your chest line kind of thing. Yeah. And that way you have a little bit more of that angle and it's like more like a penguin. You know, if you feel like a penguin, then you're probably doing it right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Where's Batman? Yeah. You're getting a little cold. Yeah. I think that was a good penguin. Yeah. <laughs> there was ice. Bro. There was ice. Face <laughs> cold. Yeah. Ice cold. Yeah. But yeah, like since day one, I think, uh, Alice, you have one of the cleanest penguin styles in Kendama, I think. Thank you, have penguin protein for life. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> still, still, there's, there's not too many people who mess with the penguins. I know, I forgot when it was like when I was on a penguin grind for something. Like your hand kind of gets a little, a, a little stressed out. The muscles and shit in yeah. there. Yeah, there's some, some tension, some stretching, some weirdness going you on. You know the yeah. feeling when you do a lot of uh, candlestick tricks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you squeeze the, the spike. You're pinching so yeah, after so much. 15 minutes, your hand gets sore. Yeah. Which is the same with penguin. If you do the penguin a lot, your your wrists are getting weird. So mm -hmm. it's 
it, I don't know, but I had a, a tennis arm problem uh, from mm, uh, doing the thing. Elbow. Yeah, tennis yeah. elbow in yeah. the beginning. So <laughs> oh, I, I walk in Nutella like this for a couple of weeks. Just so I bust too many penguin tricks, and now it doesn't penguin work. Penguin elbow? Okay. There's penguin yeah, elbow. Penguin elbow. It's a penguin got, elbow, yeah. yeah. Like the, the penguin flipper. You you became a penguin on one side. So one is hang dead. <laughs> I tried to play with left as well, so I would back it in. <laughs> and do all the simple tricks, like uh, lunar stall mm -hmm. with left. Mm -hmm. Pretty funny to learn that again. Dude, it's hard. It's it's, it's, hard. it's very fun though and satisfying when you do it. It's like you're just restarting your kinama journey, just getting yeah. back in there with yeah. your other hand. And you're like, and I've been right, there. Hand, you know what to do now. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like your mind you knows what you need to do. Exactly. So mm -hmm. you have to. You normally you're right. Now you have to do it with your left hand. So yeah. everything is is throwing the other way. Mm -hmm. You know when you turn it uh, right. Yeah. otherwise or no yeah, yeah. Exactly. So yeah, yeah. like the one you have to think about stuff. it oh it's mirror so i have to turn it the mm -hmm. other way okay let's do it yeah so i did a trade play with left as well and there i was like go. hey it's yeah. the same same feeling when oh you land it from the first time with your normal hand mm -hmm. you know oh and my gosh just to get that kick out of mm -hmm. it right, and right. i found that interesting with left-handed players how some of them will kind of Jimi hendrix style it and leave the string through the right-handed um hole on the Cerrado. Does it other do that? Will actually play legit left hand. I believe Christian Frazier still plays that way. I could yeah. be wrong. Oh, it was free. Yeah. yeah, right. But yeah, which like, you know, kind of changes the style a little bit because Completely. like you said, rather than spinning clockwise, you're going counterclockwise for a pull-up lunar or for a one-turn airplane and stuff. So you're really just changing a little bit of a dynamic of the game, which is going to alter your style a little bit. Yep, right. kind of brings some different flavor to the table, you know? Yeah. I've always found that to be cool. Those are more players that uh, that, that just leave uh, right-handed and they're playing left. Mm, like so. like Edwin. Shredwin's just been yep. posting switch tricks that most people can't do regular. And you're just like, was that switch? Of course it was, you little fucker. Uh, George Marco <laughs> can do it as well. He was the George yeah. Marco. Oh, yeah. He won on a... Yeah, yeah. He won on a... Later. Yeah. Yep, yep. Uh, yeah, that's a good idea actually for 28 geez. tricks later is get the left hand in there oh, or the, the weak hand, sorry. I think Sweets did that Not last year. Right -handed. Yeah. But that's a good idea for, for anybody looking, if you're scrounging, scraping your head, looking for what something to do go? for 28 tricks later, get get the other guy in there. You know? Shaka yeah. la mano, take them yeah. in and get in there. Penguins like are both, both, both arms. Yeah. <laughs> like Bjorn, he, Bjorn, he used both hands, you know, yeah, he picked exactly, up the left and the right, exactly. the whole yeah, 20 yeah, tricks yeah. later. Yeah, he yeah, yeah, yeah. Both hands. Yeah, that was wild to watch. It is nice. Mm -hmm. And it is, uh, they're not banger bangers, but it's still impressive. She, she, she's well, yeah. doing that. Yeah, the, but the fact that you're doing it ambidextrously kind of like adds that banger feel to it, right? You're mm -hmm. like, oh, it's a double J, but oh, you did double J with both hands? Like, yeah. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That would not be easy. You yeah, know? Right. And then now you're thinking about it like, well, I can do a double J. And then you get up and grab we'll it with try your it. hand. You're like, oh, <laughs> Okay, uh, okay, Bjorn right. went hard on this one. Yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> and then it's like in a line, you know? <laughs> exactly, yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. 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 Those, those low key bangers. Like, yeah. You watch it and you're like, oh, yeah, easy. And then you try and you're like, oh, oh okay. This might take okay. me a while. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, totally. <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> Shit. Dudes, we've been grinding for a while. Thank you so much, Alex. We, so much that we've been learning about your, your past uh, love with Kendama and, and the creation of that massive, masterful collection that we everybody knows about, especially if they, if they follow you or probably if they don't follow you, I think somewhere, you know, they've seen that collection and be like, whoa. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's so awesome. Like, so awesome. Maybe one of the most iconic collections in the whole world, honestly. I think so. Sort of like the JKA office and the Sweets collection with the Sweets Museum. But I mean, those are like companies that put money into like acquiring Kendamas. So right. Like, as right. far as individuals' collections, I feel like this has to be one, one of, if not the most iconic and like. Possibly that displays the most as well. I'm sure plenty of people have like massive collections, but like you'll only see yeah. them like, oh, it's like, like I finally took my collection out and whatever. Took yeah, a picture. But this like, is like, you know, like, like Alex Smith and like myself, all of our stuff is like in a box, you know, in yeah. the shop. And it's, oh, yeah, I got one of those. It's just like in a box inside of another box underneath. <laughs> exactly. That box there. You pull one shit it, out. Uh, yeah. Connected to 50 others, you know? Yeah. It's like, it's like <laughs> now nah, you're going to have to take my word for it. We ain't <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Oh, uh, <laughs> dude, dude. So we went, went through so much awesome stories to, to come to a kind of closure, come to an end. Everyone who is uh, helping 
the nerds out with uh, Patreon supporting us. Thank you all so much. But there's special time for people who uh, or, or chance for people to ask our guests questions. So that's that time right now. We got one dope question from fellow team member, fellow legend, Daniel Robinson comes in okay. asking the question. What are the differences and similarities between European Kendama scene and the Western Kendama scene? Like, I think it is not not that they're far apart from each other. Totally. If, if if this weekend, this event proved anything, I would say that it shows that it's just on par. If it's not, on the same level and people are creative everywhere, like in the West End or in Europe. They still have their own style. And the copycats, everyone, you know, oh, he can, oh, he can do that. Okay, next time, I do the same shit, mm-hmm. but then in my own style. But I think it's the same as in, in, in America or in Europe. Mm-hmm. It doesn't really matter. You can see it is, we feel Western in Europe as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. Like, yeah. we're not Japanese. We're yeah, not I was going to say, compared to Japan, I guess this is West. That is, right? that is <laughs> yeah. different. But between <laughs> Europe and America, I think mm-hmm. it's so close. Yeah. It is so, very similar. It like, is. Yeah, even just like thinking about like NAKL versus the EKC, you know, like it was both very, very hyped up events, lots of very, like so many talented players. And like, like you're saying, everybody has their own individual style mm-hmm. and like everybody has this passion and love for the game the same. Yeah. It's, the only real difference is the place ge- ge- geographically and then also sometimes the language because there's a lot more languages over here and stuff. Yeah. Like as in like we were talking but still, about still everybody's night. dope and speaks English, you know. It's so easy. Yeah, most yeah. of them they do. Yeah. Most yeah. Europeans do. Yeah. yeah. We're we're kind of slacking in the West. Most Europeans oh, yeah. speak like four languages. And we're all like, you know, in Canada, we're like, oh, I speak French. I'm <laughs> I speak French yeah. Canadian. <laughs> and then you and then you talk to a French person from France and they're like, that's sorry to break it to you, buddy, but that ain't quite French. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's kind of a funny thing. <laughs> Yeah, we have a lot of different languages in Europe, so but yeah, most of the people can play uh, talk English. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I have actually a, a little runoff question from that. Was Kendama a part of you learning English, or did you like learn English before? Oh, I could. Uh, I learned English on school. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, Everyone okay. here in Holland in uh, gets. Mm-hmm. I think nowadays they get in uh, on the group eight. I, I guess they already. Mm-hmm. So they are twelve years old. Yeah. And they learn English. Okay. So and then you go into a higher class mm-hmm. to find out what you want, really want to do later. So when you're 13 and 14, English is standard. Mm-hmm. So cool. got, you got four or five hours English in in a week. Mm-hmm. So you're learning English on school here in Holland. So cool. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought. I, I just thought it was interesting because, like, you know, for myself, like Kendama is the reason I learned Japanese. You know, mm-hmm. because I met so many Japanese players and people that I just wanted to talk to. So I put in some effort to try and learn it. So I thought maybe it might be the same kind of thing. No, but I I, I, um, I learned more when, while typing and mm. chatting with everyone worldwide. Mm-hmm. So sometimes I was really missing some words in between. Mm, I see. And in the beginning, people helped me out. Like, hey, you have to say this. And oh, this, well, oh, you mean this. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm learning and learning. Oh, yeah. And then with chatting and talking with you guys worldwide, it helped me a lot. Mm-hmm. So, but I still have a hard time getting into it yeah so last week on wednesday i was only talking dutch <laughs> and then suddenly to, i pick up the switch team and i need to talk english so and and that switch is still hard it takes i think two days mm-hmm. before you know i find so my word to, talk, to really get a conversation yeah. <laughs> yeah, i understand that the same with esther yeah. yesterday yeah esther, esther, esther is my girlfriend but she had the same thing but then more difficult Mm-hmm. You know, for me, it's easier to switch, and for her, it takes a little bit more because she don't chat and talk in English with friends worldwide. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I understand how she was feeling, and she, <laughs> yeah, but she's doing well. She understands everything. Same as me, I heard everything. If it is English, we, we can follow it. But mm-hmm. to talk back, it's another level. No, it's totally. Harsh, but yeah, I had this. No problem if we we are into it, but mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, I had the same thing at the event. There's a, a Japanese girl named Yuki who was there. She lives in Germany and she just found Kendama while living in Germany. So she like found like new style Kendama play. And she, she came to the EKC 
having only been playing for like three weeks, I think she said. Oh, yeah, wow. yeah. I think I heard about Nick had in a while talking ago. about that on like the on the stream. I think he was mentioning that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so like I I had a chance to practice some Japanese with her, and I was so I was hanging out with her, and we were just talking in Japanese for a little bit. Nice. And then like you know I was hanging out with the French guys, and I was like trying to throw some French words in there, and then I'm speaking Ooh. English, and I'm just like, wait, <laughs> what in the hell is going on in my brain? You know, oh, it's like yeah. it's hard to flip that switch right, right. and then, like, come yeah. back and forth and up speaking and down. Spanish every once in a while because you were just. Mexico yeah, I actually like I was yeah I was with Chato and he got a call from Shimao and Ayumu and uh they were talking I started s- talking in Japanese to them and then I also said I, instead of saying like soul soul means like yes it's like an affirmative in Japanese yeah, so yeah. and I said see si, see si. and I'm like well that also kind of means the same thing it just happens to be Spanish and it's super yes. similar and I'm like wait fuck but it's yeah, funny dude. because both of them actually spoke Spanish too language is a crazy thing man it's very interesting yeah (laughs) yeah so that would there there would be one big difference right with the north american and european scene there's a lot more language involved (laughs) Mm -hmm. yeah yeah cultural Mm -hmm. uh yeah the culture in general honestly just like the vibe there's like a, a it's hard to put into like words but you definitely feel a euro vibe over here there's more of a like everyone's kind of more chill is less mm. like you know like yeah, but what you told earlier the the, the, the kendama machine in europe have a higher level of age mm-hmm. of that of age you know so, uh, there are the yeah. older people here in europe yeah. that well, the, yeah. in america there are still kids from i think 12 till 16 years old yeah even younger maybe yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. younger but in europe you're all above 18 mm-hmm. almost yeah. maybe a couple of those yeah, 16 every, or 17 yeah. but maybe everybody, in, like, uh, in like latvia right maybe they're still young a car or have a family yeah. Yeah, travel a lot you know they're, mm-hmm. they're on the higher level age so yeah. yeah totally yeah that is actually yeah i think that is the that's the most different yeah. between mm-hmm. i think europe america and europe age yeah and we have all yeah. the players in europe so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I feel like, yeah, just having that, that kind of like laid backness, like, because there is a real connection, I think, between all Kanjama players. It's so new. Everyone wants to like, like befriend th- the toy itself, but also like the people within the community. And it's such a, totally. such an interesting kind of feeling with anybody who is like getting into any hobby, you know, like in the past nerd episodes, me and Rob, we talk about like heavy metal. Like that's what kind of like got us into like a community kind of base thing. And then we see that within Kendama or any kind of, you know, extreme sports, like right, Alex, like you like starting rollerblading, me like skateboarders. There's a lot of like similar mindsets, but there is a connection with Kendama. But at the same time, since Kendama is fresh, it's like, I don't know, like there's, there's some sort of like more genuine, like compassion that comes from Kendama players, I feel maybe because it's so young, but more, I feel like there's more like openness and within Europe, especially because of like the rich history and culture that's all around. I, and as well as like all the other countries, like how many countries are like right next to each other. And like, like, Hey, yeah, we got We got to be cool with each other. We like, nobody wants war. Nobody wants to fight. And that's another th- that like, point that adds to it compared to like the u.s where it's like i don't know i feel like u.s just talk shit all the time like <laughs> you know and and oh, yeah. maybe we're trying to like show off to each other or show off like we're better we're better so there's that mentality a little bit where in europe it's like yeah there's the, like you were saying Rod, there's like the laid back vibe is is stronger it's just the euro vibe I don't know, yeah not right it's hard to explain like i was it saying, is it's, yeah it's just the euro vibe man you yeah. gotta be out here to really feel it yeah that's what it is Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I uh, I remember that when uh, when Christian Fraser asked me to join the team in the Legend team, at that point also thinking, hey, I'm 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 kind of an old person that plays Kadama, so but that was also the goal from Street because age is just a number. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter how old you are, but I'm representing the older people that play that that look to Kadama and say, nah, I'm too old for that, mm-hmm. and they're seeing me like, hey. I still have an opportunity to start playing Kendama. Yeah. You know, I'm 48 now and I still have fun with it. So maybe I'm 30. Why the, why I can't play Kendama? So let's go. Mm-hmm. So this is maybe a step up for people that just watched Kendama and see me playing. I'm gray hair. <laughs> I'm, I'm almost 50, but still jamming and 
throw out some bangers from once in a Absolutely, while, you know. Yeah. So yeah, it helps maybe to get starting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All the people that are maybe in twenty or beginning of thirty. Mm-hmm. Never too old to have fun. No, exactly. <laughs> that's why I stand for. Yeah, and I feel like that's of course something with in Japan, you know, it's already seen as like an older toy. So it's totally fine, I think, for like, you know, older generations to pick it up again because it's like, oh yeah, I remember when this when I was a kid. Um and there's no like kind of like when this thing came out. Yeah. <laughs> I met like, a guy that said that once in Japan. He was legit like 109. I was what? with I was with Chad and um <laughs> and Tio. We we're walking around it was when me and Tio were filming that Sumi must ending at it. And yeah, yeah. uh yeah, we're walking down the street in Sumida and this old Japanese guy, we we're all playing and he just kind of comes by and I was talking to him in Japanese and he's literally like, yeah, I remember when those came out. And he's like, you're fucking kidding me. This man is older than Kendama. This wow. Wild. So only, coincidence only, you met him. Only in Japan. A 100, 109 year old man. I'll yeah. walk by himself. <laughs> Crazy. Madness. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But so then there's that and then there's like this feeling uh, I feel like within in Europe that maybe is a little more accepting. I'm not so sure with the older generations, but like definitely with within the US, if you're even like 20 years old and you know you're trying to act cool and shit and looking mm-hmm. at this toy totally doesn't look cool. Uh like yeah. it's it's such an amazing thing that is on the next level. I think people don't even really think about, but how sweets is like, yeah, invited you for, you know, since the beginning, since in 2014, not total beginning, but to have someone in an elder, elder spot, older generation than the, the pros at the time. Mm-hmm. And to, yeah, to just make a connection that everyone can still do this and plenty of Ken Jaman players, young have been like posting like, wow, I'm going to be doing this until I'm old. Like I see, I can see myself continuing this and you could definitely be a part of it. And I feel like that is a a cool thing that maybe like, who knows other teams should try to get behind too, to really like spread or, or, or maybe even create groups. I know uh, Sue lab has an oldies team. Um, Yeah. 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 and, And it's like, from like up above, what was it? 30, 30 and above players. Oh, and of yeah. course it, it goes, it goes kind of high, like into the 40, whatever, maybe around where you are, Alex, but yeah, to, to show that, yeah, it's all right to play this kid's toy. Cause what do we all want to do in our lives? Just have a fucking good time. That's right. That's, that's, that's why I'm still in these freestyle comps and shit. I'm holding it down for the OG squad. Yeah, yeah dude. I really love it. <laughs> Dude, I love when I mean he's not super old, but I, I'd love to see the, the resurgence of Tokyo on that freestyle yeah. stage. That was Dude, great. I some was so excited. Classic turntables, like some pizzas. Yeah. yeah. Well, TK yeah, vibes, the old the old fucking swing under the leg jump kick. Yeah, yeah dude. Face. Dude, yeah, like, that, best that smile. Yeah, that TK smile is just best smile in the game. Untouchable. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to you. Much love, buddy. <laughs> uh, shit, guys, we've been grinding on a long mm-hmm. one. A legendary yeah. episode for the legend, the, the forever mm-hmm. super nog. Alex, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I know love you guys got to get rolling, right? So, Alex, is there anything that you'd like to share about Kendama? Like things that you've noticed? What was maybe like a, something that, that really changed Kendama that you saw that was like, this is going to be big or or no, that's that's whack. Like, come on, ring, ring cup. I don't know about that ring oh, dama. Yeah. Ring dama. <laughs> no, I think there are no limits. It's just kendama related. I like. I, I love everything, but you can do tricks with. You know, kendama wise. Mm-hmm. So that ring was very funny. You you want to do it for a day, and then you're done with it. You know. Yeah. And. That's why I play that mini micro kendama from the JK8. Mm. It's fun, but you don't do that every day. But oh. you go into it, but was it three centimeters? Yeah. Dude, Something. yeah. That's another little bit of nerd's homework is Ken Alex versus the the mini, the three centimeter kendama. He does some wild shit on this little thing. It's it's, uh, it's, like, it's, it's like a micro my fingernail. Is that I don't have big hands. And also, everyone, if you want to make one, uh, he has a tutorial on how to turn a chrome keychain into one of these minis. Or you, I think they, they sell them now. You can even pick them up on uh, on like Kusa. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's true. Strung uh, up and everything. 
They were very common. So uh, I got a Swiss one and a Chrome one. Yeah, I make a tutorial how to turn it into a keychain into a real playing Kandala. And it's real Luna too. So it's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. It's wild. You should you should get some uh some cushion action on those. <laughs> <laughs> hey, dude, if you do get loose of your Tama, it's still hanging on your finger that yeah, time. You, you it doesn't weigh down to your finger like this. <laughs> like <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> but is, my goal is to do a spacewalk with this tiny one. Still a spacewalk. I tried for so long. I mean, you have like it's like the tiniest little thread. It is for a string, oh, and it's Alex, so, so close for a couple. I think it's still heavier. How 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 big is that compared to the eraser, Kendama? You have that one? It's smaller than the eraser. Eraser is the mini mini mini. What is the eraser one? There's like those rubber Macro. ones that they sold that were like colorful and it's an actual an eraser. Yeah. But the, no, this is definitely smaller than the eraser. Where the, the Ken was plastic, the Sarado is an eraser and the Tama is an eraser. This is, the one I, this is the one I made myself from the keychain. Where was it? Yeah. Yes. Okay. 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 How big this next tiny one is. one is. Okay. No. It's like oh, the regular shit. next to a boss, dude. <laughs> yeah. They just, it's, just like that. it's real tiny. Like, <laughs> it really disappears in your thumbs, like between your fingers. It disappears. Like I can't stress enough how I don't have that big of hands. Like this I'm is not actually, Rolf. This is chewing, you know, uh, <laughs> chewing stuff. Like you were uh, sewing your clothes. Yeah, sewing. Yeah. Oh, thread. thread yeah, sewing thread. Enough. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like I bet you this is still heavier than the can itself if you swing it. Like this. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Insane. So that's no, now we yeah, know like, how really tiny it is. I love so, that yeah, little case that you had for it. Go watch that edit and have your fun and make sure you bring a towel to clean your brain matter up afterwards. Because good lord, exactly that are done on this thing are just. <laughs> oh, shout out Yoko to help me out. Yes. to get those. Yoko, they were uh, only on, uh, available on the JK side in Japan. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, Yoko was a huge crux in the community, she dude. She really was like really behind the scenes. Like not a lot of people knew unless you were like buying stuff off of her, but like. She did a lot for Kendama and bringing Whoa. it to the West. So oh, let's take notes. So let's take notes. Dude, I'm a higher. Pen, pen. Oh, dude. You got that too, right? <laughs> I got I got I got this style. There oh, you go. The red and the blue. Yep. Damn. Yeah. So you have better cups. Your, your cups are so much better though. This this I think it's the same as from the from the 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 keychain. You get out uh when you went to uh the, the island where we Play Kendama, what's Miyajima. Kendama? Miyajima. Yeah. So they have uh, automats. You can put a coin in and you turn oh, yeah, it and the okay, ball okay. came out. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. That, that tiny Kendama is what in yes. there. That's the same yes. as this car. Mm. Okay. Yeah, that's the one that, like the Zumadonki guys. Hold on. Yeah. Yes. From the gacha gacha machines, they're called in Japanese. Yeah. Or I guess we would just call it a vending machine kind of thing where you put the coin in, you spin it in, and then the ball comes out and you get a random one. What's, what's going on over there, bud? Okay, okay, okay. So, yes, this guy, right? Oh, this was, this yeah, was yeah, out yeah, of exactly. the coin. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. So, <laughs> like this shit. Yeah. Yeah. so here's, like, look at, the, look at that cup size. Yeah. Yeah. I Keep feel left out. Yeah. I don't have any novelty Kendama. Oh, oh, you got a doku. I have I have one like that. That's but It's a solid red Tama. I have that one oh, in nice. solid red. Yeah. And then here, dude, Alex, here's the... The eraser yeah, it's one. a rubber ball, right? It's a yeah, yeah it's rubber. It's, rubber. it's actually like an eraser, right? I got yeah. Some, 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 yeah, I figured you did. I got the lunar, like, the lunar I have two. No is way, Alex. beautiful. Alex doesn't have one. on it, dude. I did a I did a crazy yeah, can game with this. Mm -hmm. oh, no, I, yeah, there you go. Yeah. I did a I did a will it JKA with this guy, and this I did so I did, well yeah, with yeah. this thing, dude. I you can moon I moon circle this bitch. It was so good. Dude, yeah. So here you see your size comparison. There you go. The racer and the mini. -mini. It's, oh my God. Like it's tiny. That tiny. is tiny. I got yours one too. Look. Ooh, <laughs> hey, there you go. Name Adama. It's Name Adama. I have it. And it also <laughs> has like the whack, like the, the print of the the line. Yeah, like I it's saw thick that. really oh, yeah. here, then it gets I thin. Was. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Somebody was uh off center a little bit, spinning that boy around. What is there a sender? <laughs> 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 yeah amazingly yeah dude oh my gosh yeah so many what? crazy, crazy times is there alex is there a kendama that you are looking for that you need for your collection that you mm. haven't got yet um 
not I'm aware of, because I mostly have a, I have all of them. Maybe I want to try a shoe lab sometime. <laughs> so if I'm in Japan, I buy a shoe lab from shoe lab, you know? Mm-hmm. That's yeah. what I'm doing. I'm not ordering them online. Yeah. But if I if I walk to Japan, I see that store, I go in and I buy a shoe lab. You know? So that's yeah. one I really like to have. Oh, but yeah. Other than that, he just recently added a uh, rod hand turn to his collection yeah. on the weekend. My first yeah. one. I finally made the collection. Yeah. Nice. nice. <laughs> and uh, okay. Albert from Komkodama. Yes. He, uh, he went pro with his yeah. own model. So yep. I yep. bought yep. that yeah. Kodama uh, last weekend. Mm-hmm. So nice. just to support him. Yes, for, yes. Uh, all his craziness. Shout he out. went into the Kodama. Oh so my gosh. Shout out. Yeah. Yeah. Albert. Albert. Bring, bringing the metal into the edits. Did you see the edit, dude, MJ? I, dude, I watched the premiere on YouTube as it was. Yeah, I was like I switching it. back and forth from the live stream over to the YouTube when it was like premiering. Uh, yeah. Dude, uh, so amazing. I loved how it didn't stop. Like mm-hmm. there's like a cut where you're like, oh, it's going to be finished. He's out of the woods and shit. No, no it goes new on. New song it keeps on yeah. going. Oh my gosh. No. So and the background. great. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. yeah you, you know, it connects touch. so much with the design yeah. of the Kendama. The, uh, and yes, yeah. the metal. That's. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Metal. I need to, uh, I needed to buy that one because yeah, I want to support that guy. Mm-hmm. I yes. don't want, I don't want uh, him to stop Kendama ever, you know? No. He's a, uh, we need him. Yeah, we, it's, he makes a, yeah, he has his own style. Yeah. He really yeah. has. You know, there's no one else, there's no another. Uh, right, right. At this point. So <laughs> I had, yeah, I had some real good moments with him this, this weekend or this week at Eddie Casey and shit. We, we were, we were throwing down some bets on some 10 games. And again, we got, got, had a little bit of a spectacle going. It was pretty good. You know, nice. Like your Ken games or other people? No, playing? no, other and you're we, were, we were sitting there watching some people play Ken, and he walked up and was like, oh, I got some money on Barry. And I was like, yeah, I got two euros on, on Eric. So I put my fucking two euro coin in my big cup, put it down. He sat next to me, looked me in the eye and put a two euro coin in my big cup. And then away we went. Awesome. And then, <laughs> yeah. New ways and to the enjoy Ken we Dama. Again. We, the next day we chose our own champions. We had another game and we won that one. <laughs> But yeah. okay. it was it was he chose yeah. Max Angel, so I had I couldn't I couldn't just bet against my buddy Max, you know. No, not at all. And my mod, I, I chose Tio. It was a good match. It was a real good match. <laughs> no, I can't come up, come up with uh, with the Kandama really chasing for now. So right, I, I see what's coming out, and if I like it, I buy it. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. How about from the older styles? Like you have all the everything that you've been looking for. You got the the Rokus. Yeah, I'm still being chasing all the kendamas that are unreachable for me on the normal, yeah, like yeah. Uh, on eBay or whatever. But um, I'm stop hunting down mm. kendamas for a while. Yeah, so I'm only buying new yeah. ones. Exactly. Okay. Not searching for those yin yang mugens and no, I've, all the kotobukis. Well, I, at some point, I had yeah. all the mugens, all the different ones, and all the special ones, except the yin yang and the uh, the dark wood. Mm. Like the oh. Animal. Yeah, yeah, Dude, yeah. You know who? I think it was, was it Thorny? James Thorn Science, and I think he bought two of the yin yang ones. Oh, yeah. And it was really cheap. He like somehow just found them. I know. And I talked with him, and he didn't want to sell it to me. So at that point, <laughs> if I couldn't get those Kanamas, <laughs> my whole Mugen collection wasn't worth. So I sold my whole Mugen collection mm-hmm. and get on a trip to fly out to Japan, to America from that money. That's what's wow. up. Wow. Okay. So I put all the money back into my journey. Yeah. And yeah. Get them reinvested back into Kanama. Yeah. So oh my gosh. I, I know I, I couldn't get the grip on those. To finish the collection, mm. so that kindly of bumps me to. I mean, you had it pretty much. I had it pretty much, yeah. yeah. And it wasn't that special for me, but mm. uh, exactly was, in the uh, end, I'm sure those memories of those trips are so much better than just having a kendama yeah. on the wall. Yeah. But also, yeah. when I I made the the plastic kendamas, like the Kendalix, the the Delin ones, yeah, I bring ten to Japan and I got six mugens with trades. <laughs> so. <laughs> That also yeah, that works out. Yeah, that works out. So I make happy the people. I make people happy over there. And yeah. I, yeah. And my collection bigger. Return, yeah. Yep. So I have something in return. So a lot, of, a lot of my Kandalex Kandamas are in Japan. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Amazing. But um, yeah, I, I still want to do another run some and sooner or later with aluminium and Delwin. But sweet. with. The new shape, like super a, a bush shape, shape or amped. Yeah, like yeah. I was about to say, did, did you pick up the mini metal, Chrome? 
Yeah, yeah. I played a lot of tricks. I did a double uh, lunar. I did a trade flip on that one. Damn. So, yeah, I did a couple of ticks, and it was hard on the metal, but it cost me a little bit time yeah, to but, land those. But, but. It, oh, that's feeling the land. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, Brian is Craigline. He mm-hmm. sent me two of them. Nice. We, thought, we came to chat. Oh, don't worry. I got you, bro. So yeah. a week later, I got a package and I started playing with those. Because nice. he know I made uh, mini kanamas in the back, you know, yes. back in the day. Yes. So, and they're almost just as big. Oh, okay. But mine was also a shape and he was crom shape. Mm-hmm. Right. So too got good a little yeah. bit bigger cups. And, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. But shout out, Brian. Thanks yeah. for that. <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah, much love to Skaggs. Yes, I gotta love yeah. Skaggs. Oh my god, man, man, it's been a good little sesh, the legendary sesh that we've been exactly. talking about for years. Trying exactly. to get our boy here, Roush on the on the nerds in the in the virtual studio. Totally, dude. Um, and yeah, so I thank you so much, Alex, for you know being a guest in your own home while I'm a guest in your own home. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, setting up. Yeah, waking and, up early uh, also for you, dudes. Thank you so much. Early with that. Yeah. yeah. So we have uh, two time zones that connect. Mm-hmm. If we didn't, uh, you as a home, we have three time zones. It would have been so t- yeah. be harder. It's so a lot yeah. more difficult. That's yeah. why everybody has to wait on this episode for mm-hmm. me, I guess. Yes. And yes. it was the, the ultimate time to do it. So Exactly. Thanks for having me, guys. Absolutely. It's really nice. Yeah. It's been a pleasure. And we got to shout out, like you said before, all the Patreon people supporting the nerds, the entertainment, getting all that. Thank you. Giving MJ some, a little fuel to get all that shit going. Exactly, and exactly. All you guys Super who are helpful. listening, Thank you guys. guys and gals, peoples, listen, cats and dogs, birds, everyone just listening to the nerds, loving it. Thank you all so much for spending time with us. Yeah. And I guess on that note, these nerds are out. out.